Need some decluttering motivation? Well, I've got you covered in this three and a half hour decluttering marathon as we take on loads and loads of decluttering projects together. I am Ree from mummyof4.com. Now let's get on with some decluttering together. As you can see, my wardrobe is a bit of a mess. Um, in spite of the fact I do this periodically, um, probably every six months or so, I did actually used to have three wardrobes this size and I managed to scale it down a few years ago to just the one um, by kind of being quite ruthless and just thinking, look, do I really love this? Um, and just like Marie Kondo tells us to do, like, does it spark joy? Just think, am I gonna wear this today? Would I wear this today? And if you think, no, because it's just not nice enough, we've gone off or it doesn't fit right, get rid of it. Um, so then as I um, find the things I'm going to keep, I hang them back neatly in the wardrobe. Um, I like to hang my clothes in rainbow order. I find it's nice and easy to find things. I know some people like to organize skirts together, tops together. I personally like to organize by color and then I know what I've got, what goes with what, and I can find things easily. Now, as you can see, my drawers are not currently folded the Marie Kondo way at all. So I'm gonna pull all this stuff out, go through it. Um, oh, but look at my clothes in the rainbow. Aren't they nice? Anyway, um, I've now decided, because I've made a bit more space, I'm gonna hang up the skirts because I find they get a bit creased if I fold them. Um, and then my jeans and things are going to be refolded Marie Kondo style, um, which look how much more space. I know I've got rid of a few pairs, but I've literally got sort of twice the space folding this method. Um, so yeah, I've now got, um, I've emptied out my workout clothes from the bottom drawer, which are sadly underused, very sadly underused and underloved because I've not been working out much lately, don't tell anyone. Um, anyway, so I'm folding it all neatly. This was literally slung in this. My workout clothes were not even folded. My bras, I'm just sort of tidying those back up, throwing out a few old scabby ones. And yeah, I know they're not in rainbow order, but I was very aware that the girls were about to wake up from their nap. Anyway, bags are going into like some nice boxes and I found a whole box of scarves which were just crumpled up. And now I've got all this extra space on my drawers from the super duper folding. I'm folding the scarves too so I can actually find them and uh, maybe I'll wear them a little bit more because I can actually see them and that's it my wardrobe is now organized and you have no idea how much happier it makes me I'll be able to find things I want to wear um, I find less is a bit more with clothing once you've got rid of the stuff you don't like you feel like you've got more clothing because everything you do like and you could actually wear I've got my bags in these little boxes underneath so they're all nice and neat uh, my underwear is a little bit neater too um, this drawer makes me very happy I've got um, my trousers and things there's so much more space and all my scarves and and used workout gear. And this is my pile of stuff that did not spark joy that is ready to donate. As you can see, I wasn't joking, her wardrobe is a complete mess. It is crammed full of stuff, half of it's too small for her and it needs a really good sort out. So I always start by pulling everything out of the wardrobe so I can see exactly what I have to deal with. You'll notice I've got two rails in there. They are standard IKEA Pax wardrobes, but I did get my husband to hang the extra rail for more storage space because little ones are only small and have small clothes, so you get twice the hanging space. Zara is now a little bit older than Bella was when Zara was born, so you'll notice that some things I've got in two sizes. I've got the little size that Zara's now grown out of and the bigger size that used to belong to Bella that Zara can now wear. Things that fit Zara getting hung back in the wardrobe and things that are too small for her are being put in a separate pile to be donated. Apart from this, this was knitted by my grandmother just before she died um, for Bella. Um, sadly, she died just before Bella was born, never got to meet her, but both of the girls get to wear that lovely cardigan, so sentimental pieces like that I do keep in a special box. I am, however, trying to be a lot more ruthless with what I keep as sentimental things and what I pass on because I know that other people can get so much joy out of these things. I mean, this coat I adored. Both of the girls wore this coat, but it's still like new. And if I pass this on, some other mum and baby will get so much out of it. Some of the very tiny newborn clothes I have hang on to, like this Welsh costume for the girls to use as doll dress-up clothes. I like to use these separators for sectioning off different areas of hanging space. So here I'm sectioning off an area for Zara's dressing up clothes to keep them separate. 
I'm now sorting through a bucket of clothes that did used to belong to Bella that I've pulled out of storage that Zara has now grown into and they can now be filtered into her wardrobe for her to wear. You probably have noticed that I like to dress the girls in matching clothes so what I tend to do is dress Zara in Bella's old clothes during the week when Bella's in uniform and they wear new matching dresses on the weekends. I have managed to be quite ruthless, I'm only hanging on to these couple of very sentimental pieces. I've got this huge pile to donate and now her wardrobe is looking much neater. It'd be so much easier for me to find things for her to wear that fit. As you can see, the playroom isn't terribly messy today. If you watch some of my other speed clean videos, the playroom often looks a bit like we've been burgled. Well, today it's starting off reasonably tidy and I'm going to make it look like we've been burgled because the way I see decluttering um, I like to empty everything out so I can see what I'm dealing with because what I want to end up with is boxes of organized toys and in order to do that I need empty boxes to organize things into so I empty out all the boxes all over the floor into this hideous tip of a mess and then I'm using these baskets to sort things that belong in various other places so some of the baskets are things to be donated some of the baskets are toys that belong in one of the children's bedrooms or some of the baskets are for toys that belong in boxes I've not yet emptied so as you can see here I've emptied out more and more boxes I partly do this to commit to it because I do worry when I'm decluttering that I'm just going to sort of like, oh, I can't cope with this and chuck it all back in. I feel like when I tip it all out, I've just, I've really got to commit to it and get it done. This is something I've really been procrastinating for ages and it's just, I know that once it's done, it's such a relief. I'm sure you feel the same about decluttering. Let me know in the comments. It's always such a wonderful relief when it's done. But the ordeal of doing it and creating mess when it's not that messy is such a pain. So this box, for example, is puzzles. Um, I'm just putting all the puzzle pieces in that box and then I've got all the boxes sort of strewn around me all over the floor and then trying to sort little bits into the relevant boxes and then sort bits for recycling, bits for the bin, bits for donation. Um, a really good tip is to, to donate um, toys that your children don't play with anymore uh, to your children's school or playgroup. Often they're so great for toy donations. In fact, your children will probably play with things if you take them to their school that they wouldn't even look at in your house. So that's what I'm doing. I'm sorting out toys. I've got a friend who's had a baby that will have all the very, very baby toys. Um, and then a lot of the stuff is going to Bella's nursery class. Um, and then anything they don't want, they, they can throw out if they want to. Um, but often they're very, very grateful for toy donations. So what's worth keeping in mind when you are decluttering is you want to sort toys into sets of toys. So for example, those are Duplo blocks. Four Duplo blocks on their own are no good at all. You want to sort them into a whole box of Duplo so that they can actually be used and played with properly. Um, and then anything that doesn't go together anymore, anything they wouldn't play with, it just needs to go. So this is a box of play food, for example. My children love playing with play food and now that it's all together, they can get it out, play, play food, and then they can put it all away again. Um, I've just dumped out a box of vehicles, which I'm sorting, they have far too many vehicles, so I'm sorting it into about half of them to keep sort of their favourites, and then the other half to donate and they can go to the school. It really is worth being as ruthless as you can be when decluttering your children's toys, because less is more, and if they've got sets of good, nice quality toys, then they're far more likely to have some lovely quality play, like for example, this belongs to a set of Tate Colong Thomas trains that the children really love, um, and any of those that are, you know, are in good condition and are not broken and are in a set, if they get that out as a, a toy to play with, then they will get out all the trains, they will play with them nicely, and they'll have some good quality play. If they just tip out a box of rubbish, like you can see on the floor now, they're not gonna have good quality play with that. So, um, like these are little building, sort of stick together things, um, which they really enjoy playing with, but they've not played with them properly for so long that they've all been split up. So it's worth being ruthless and chucking out anything that is not perfect. 
Um, as you can see now, I am emptying the top shelf of the uh, units, the Calyx units that we've got. The main reason I'm doing this is because I was losing the plot on the floor. Um, there we go, I found this crane, that can go to the school, we never play with that. Um, I just wanted to stretch my legs before I got back on the floor to tip out some more stuff and just keep ploughing through. I get loads and loads of comments about our Calyx units and our rainbow themed playroom. And you'll probably notice as I'm sorting through these boxes that some of the boxes are clearly bought probably from Ikea, like the yellow ones and the red ones for example were yellow and red when I bought them, but they didn't sell orange or purple ones at the time. So there's a purple box just in the corner of the shop you can see there. It was actually a white box that was spray painted with fabric spray paint um, to make it purple on the front. The orange boxes that you can see are exactly the same. We didn't bother to spray the sides or the insides of the boxes, so they're just sort of orange or purple on the front um, and not on the inside. So um, if you do have a Calyx unit and you can't find the right colour, you can always consider spray painting to match your room. Now you'll see that I am pulling a bean bag out of the tent in a second, here it is. Um, now this bean bag has not yet been emptied of beans like the other ones. If you can see on the left here, I like to leave an empty bean bag so I can store soft toys in it. This bean bag has not yet been emptied and I just don't know the time that we're going to need to do it today because it's a bit of a messy job to empty the beans out. But ideally I will get that done pretty soon, empty it of all the beans and then the soft toys will stop taking up space in the Galax boxes and they can go away in the bean bag. It's a really good way to store the soft toys. Uh, now I'm just, as you can see, sorting things. So that's like a box of building things. I'm actually starting to get someone out. It's a box of puzzles. A box is of collected toys. There you go, that's for donation. It's quite satisfying when you end up getting toys sorted into the boxes and put away where they're actually going to live. I can actually start seeing the floor again, feeling like maybe it's all worth it after all. It wasn't a really stupid idea to start this massive decluttering project. We've all been there. Um, so that's a box of books. They need to go upstairs. Um, and yeah, have you ever been there where you started a decluttering project and just thought, why, why did I start this? What was I thinking? Anyway, all the stuff's coming off the top of the Calyx unit now, which I must admit has not been cleaned for a long time. Look how disgusting and dusty that is. That is really quite revolting. So yeah, it's quite nice because these units have been wedged full of stuff for ages. And after a bit of declutter, they've just got one or two things on top of them now, so they're going to be much easier to clean. Right, so here's what we've got in the boxes. We have got Take Along Thomas, Trains and Track in those two boxes. These are the boxes that I am for the children. I've got to reach down for them. That's a box of puzzles. Um, they are cars and vehicles. I've detested a lot of those. They're going to the school. I haven't really touched that box. That's a box of figures. I'll have to do that another day. Um, that's a box of soft toys, which really needs to be decanted into the beanbag, and another box of soft toys. So that'll free up two boxes there. That's the big red boat and a rocket, which previously lived on top of the unit. Um, and these are two boxes of Happy Street. On the end, we've got a box of sort of characters and things, then another box of soft toys, which needs to go in the bean bag with an empty of beans. This is a box of kind of building stuff. So these are linking letters, good for sort of hand eye coordination and some fine motor skills, and then some more things that stick together, like stipple bricks for building. And then two boxes of Duplo on the end. And like I said, the idea is the children get out a box or two boxes if it's something like Duplo that formed two boxes of stuff at a time, then it all goes away. Over here we've got prepare, pretend play stuff, things like doctor sets and shopkeeper stuff, and then two boxes of play food. They really do love playing with the play food, so I've let them keep quite a lot of that because it really does get used. Now it's time for a bit of a clean. The floor needs a really good vacuum after having all that stuff dumped all over it. Um, and then the playroom can be back to looking nice and clean and tidy, but at least now I know the boxes inside are quite decluttered. Hopefully this will mean less clutter and therefore much easier to keep. I'm starting this to clutter the way I always do, which is by emptying everything out. Um, I'm putting all the little bits and pieces into these curver laundry baskets. These are my large curver laundry baskets that I use for cleaning dirty washing normally, but also they're great for things like this when you're decluttering. Um, I've also got the smaller curver baskets, which again, I use for sorting normally laundry into different rooms. I also use them for packing, unpacking and things like decluttering. 
decluttering. They are just amazing for sorting. So I've dumped it all on the bed. Now while I'm decluttering, I'm going to listen to things on my iPad using my AirPods. Um, I shove these in my ears and that way, wherever I am walking around, I've got something to listen to um, that is interesting to keep me going. A music on or audiobook or whatever. Um, it just is a little bit more interesting than just listening to nothing really. It keeps me entertained a little bit while I'm decluttering. So why would I empty Zara's, no, Bella's wardrobe? Gosh, do you do that ever by the way? Do you call your children by the wrong name? Why am I emptying Bella's wardrobe into my room and not just into her room? Now, a couple of reasons for this. Partly because the children are home and they're playing in Bella's room, so I don't want them in amongst it all and sort of stopping me from throwing things out as they always do. Um, and partly because if I don't put everything out at the beginning of a declutter, I'm very likely to lose interest halfway through just close the doors and stop. Let me know in the comments. Are you likely to do that with decluttering? Um, it's very hard to sort of stay motivated to keep it done. Whereas when I've made a massive mess like this, it's like there's no way out of this. I've got to, <laughs> I've got to go through it and just get on with it. I've got to sort it out. There is no option because I just couldn't go to bed tonight if this wasn't done. So by getting all this stuff, really making a real mess in my own room, I'm forcing myself to finish this. So I'm just sorting things into the different baskets. I've got a basket for stuff that's going to Zara's room now that will fit her now. So yes, there is some stuff that would fit a two-year-old in my four-year-old's uh, wardrobe. That's how long it's got a big declutter. Um, I've got some stuff that is sort of age three that will fit Zara, but not yet. So that needs to go away for her for when it's ready. I've got some stuff that needs donating. I've got some stuff that just needs recycling because it's not good for anybody. Oh look, there's Zara. She's come to help. And by help, I mean, sit in the middle and pull things out of baskets and already sorted. Is this how your children help or is this just my children? Look how helpful she is. Oh bless her, she's cute though. Oh look, she's putting on socks. That's helpful, isn't it? Putting on the socks I'm trying to sort, yes. Anyway, back onto the decluttering. Um, I do like to um, make sure that I'm being as ruthless as possible when I'm decluttering. There's no point in putting something away for Zara. With, when I'm going to get it out, I'm going to go, oh, it's actually a bit picky, it's a bit yucky, I'm not going to put it on her. You're better off getting rid of things first as last. Be ruthless. There's no point in storing things for ages than pulling them out and going, ugh, actually, no, I'm not going to put that on my daughter. So be as ruthless as you can. It's a horrible thing to clutter and to do, but it feels so, so good when it's done. Now, one of the things you can see I'm sorting into, these little purple things are Ikea kind of drawer dividers. They come in all sorts of different colours. They come as like a flat pack thing, you zip them out. And I like to divide up the drawers, especially those really wide drawers, into like sections of things. Because when it's all just dumped in one big drawer, it ends up being a real mishmash and descends into this kind of chaos a lot quicker. I mean, eventually, I think any drawer and wardrobe will descend into chaos unless it gets sorted regularly. But um, it's going to happen a lot quicker if you haven't got things divided up. So that's what those purple things are. They will get put directly into the drawers um, when I have finished sorting them. And then the other baskets, the white curva baskets you can see, are things to be put in different places. They're sort of, they're to be um, trafficked into either recycling or um, sorting ready for Zara's bedroom or Zara's sort of stuff to be put away for when she's a little bit older. Now another thing that's quite good for sorting drawers, if you can see those kind of goldy coloured boxes, they are actually the boxes I get perfume in. You know when you get like a gift set for perfume at Christmas? They make really good drawer sorting boxes because they're small, they can go in you know, small drawers, large drawers to section them off. So those, um, those boxes are really great because they're sort of generally quite pretty and they're quite sturdy. Other boxes that are quite good for keeping are like a box your iPhone would come in, good for sort of keeping lots of little tiny bits and drawers but yeah any of those kind of gift boxy quite tight boxes that are quite sturdy boxes um, hang on to those because they can be really handy for organizing your drawers
So you can see now we're back in Bella's wardrobe. This is a big Pax wardrobe from Ikea um, and it's got these big drawers in it. You can see that this is one of the perfume boxes I was talking about. It's great for her school hair accessories. I've just slotted those boxes I've sorted everything into and there you go, there's one of the uh, drawer dividers. They are just the school tights. I've now got all her pyjamas which need sorting into her room. Now I'm folding them in the Marie Kondo kind of folding way and popping them in this drawer but as you can see um, when you fold things up in the this Marie Kondo fold which is where you fold things into thirds and then make these little triangle parcel things and um, let me know if you want me to do a specific video just on that folding method um, let me know in the comments and I shall do one of those if you like um, but anyway when you fold things up like this um, they work a lot better like I was saying before when things are kind of folded into a smaller like area so I've got this other basket I've been off to find and those um, pajamas are now sort of fitting a lot better they're gonna stay a lot neater because they're sorted within that basket now to sort out Bella's actual sort of hanging clothes we've done like pants socks all that kind of stuff this is all the stuff that was hanging up so this is all her dressing up clothes this is all her school clothes that were just in there from last year. Um, some of these bits are far too small need to go to Zara. Some of them need to be put away, like the school uniform. A lot of that doesn't fit Bella anymore and needs to be put away for when Zara starts school, which will be next spring. Um, but also because Bella's wardrobe is larger than Zara's wardrobe, as you know, I dress the girls in matching outfits. So one section of Bella's wardrobe I actually hang up their matching dresses and I hang them in pairs because they always wear them on the same day so Zara's wardrobe is primarily clothes that um, that she, that don't match anything so they're clothes that Bella's grown out of and Zara's just there's just like one of them if that makes sense um, and then in Bella's wardrobe which is wider they have the um, the matching dresses section in there um, there's also a tutu rail um, the girls have done loads of uh, ballet since they were very little, so all the tutus go on a separate rail in Bella's room. Again, just they're like shared tutus, but they're just uh, there's more space in there. So I'm just trying to sort all of this out um, because look at the mess. There's just so much of it, and when the wardrobe is over crammed, you can't find anything. Everything is falling off the hangers. Everything gets creased, and it just it fries my brain a little bit. If I'm honest, um, so um, I've got all these little pink hangers. Um, primarily for sort of most of the hanging up stuff and then some of these wooden hangers and skirt hangers for the tutus and things. Um, so I'm just hanging all the stuff up. Over to the far left side is all the matching dresses things. You can see I'm hanging them up two by two. Um, my husband always jokes I pack like I'm packing to the art because I pack everything two by two um, for the girls. Um, you might have noticed that I like to hang all the clothes in rainbow order. Let me know in the comments, is this just me? My world seems better if everything's hanging in rainbow order. Um, right, so this is all old uniform, or is this new uniform? No, this is current uniform. This is uniform I bought. Let's see, my brain's totally gone today, isn't it? Uh, this is new uniform I bought for Bella. So some of it's the winter stuff with the long sleeve t-shirts, and some of it is the short sleeve t-shirts um, for the kind of warmer months. Um, now, there's more than enough for Bella, there's more than five days worth, but the way I see it is this uniform will do two little girls, and if there's more of it, it's not going to be worn out as quickly. Um, it's all supermarket stuff. If you've seen my um, Georgia Asda uniform hauls, you know it's not expensive stuff, but having a bit more of it that I would need doesn't matter because it will do two little girls, and like I said, the stuff that Bella's grown out of is still immaculately clean and tidy um, because there was, you know, she's not worn any of it out as such, so it's all good enough for Zara. So those bits and pieces need to be sort of donated. This stuff needs to be sorted and put away uh, in Zara's room. That stuff is will fit Zara, but not yet. Some of that stuff needs to um, be put away for Zara as well. And this is all uniform that um, has Bella's grown out of that needs to go away for Zara. So that's her wardrobe looking a lot better, a bit neater and tidier, generally not so crammed. All the uniform down one end hung up nicely. All the pretty tutus, aren't they so lovely? I just really do love tutus. Um, and then that's Bella's school tights. Her other tights, I like to roll them up like that. All her knickers and socks. And then those are her long school socks um, and her hairbands and things. And then all her pyjamas, Marie Kondo folded over there and a dressing gown. And there's some space in there and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. Should we get on with the decluttering? Mm. Yes.
I am starting, as I always do, with a declutter by just assessing what I've got to do. So I'm going to work on these drawers where um, they are a total mess. Uh, they're just all jumbled. They were nice and organised about two years ago when I got my dressing table and then if I've got time I'm going to try and tackle some of these messy boxes under the bed. I've got my trusty curver baskets which I use for everything, for sorting, decluttering, tidying, I just have stacks of them and that little duster was Zara in the corner helping so I'm just clearing the top of the dressing table, putting everything into the basket and then clearing the drawers into the baskets as well so I can take them elsewhere and sort them. I always feel like if I get everything out in order to declutter it kind of forces me to do it. I feel like if I was to just declutter from the drawer and just fish things out from the drawer, it'd be too tempting to just close the drawer and walk away. Let me know in the comments if you feel the same when you're decluttering. I feel like I've got to like totally get it out, empty it, start from scratch, um, and also then obviously I can get the drawer the clean out too. But it just makes me do it. It kind of, it creates a mess that I can sort through rather than just, if it's just picking bits out from the drawer, honestly, I would never, get it done. So decluttering is not my favourite thing to do. I do love when it's done though. Right now I'm now vacuuming this bit of my dressing table because the rest of it can be dusted. That bit is kind of like a carpety, fabric-y um, thing and lots of bits of dust and things get stuck to it so it's got to be vacuumed. The rest of the dressing table can just be cleaned with normal cleaning products. Oh look it's a pasta necklace that will make me. So I'm using my, um, my duster, my reusable duster head thing uh, to initially give it a dust and a bit of pledge and a microfiber cloth and um, I'm just wiping over this is a heat proof mat that I put my hair straighteners on it's great stops the dressing table getting kind of burnt um, so then that lives behind my mirror um, this I get asked a lot about this my dressing tables from Ikea and those lights were added on afterwards my husband added those um, manually they were not from Ikea but the dressing table itself was I am now giving the um, drawers a little wipe out with a bit of Zoflora they're just a bit dusty and gross um, they did all the stuff was in like drawer separators um, so it was reasonably easy to clear out but I just thought while the drawers are empty it's a good opportunity to give them a little clean because I don't think these drawers have been cleaned in two years which is quite gross it's quite disgusting um, and then just giving this little mirror a little wipe over we've got a pledge as well um, and then once that's all kind of been cleaned over I can tackle all this mess look at all this mess I've made oh and Zara's brought a potty stool in how helpful I've also got this box to sort through now in this box I've got empty boxes for Apple products that have been bought over the last goodness knows how many years um, there are a few bits in there that I realised that um, I should be keeping things like chargers and things in there but these boxes for things like Apple products, they have, do have really nice boxes and you can use the lids as drawer dividers. So if you have any of those, look how nice they look in the drawers as drawer dividers, like little lids and things like that. So keep hold of them. The other things that make good drawer dividers are, you know when you get perfume box sets for Christmas, um, when you get like a perfume and a, and a smelly or whatever that's what those are on red that sort of gold box it's a perfume box and they make fantastic drawer dividers and separators now top hack for you if you store your hair elastics on a carabiner it's a great way to keep them together and if you store your hair pins you know you like bobby pins uh, with that's what they're called hair grips in an old tic tac box it's perfect it's got this little lid on it obviously clean it out first but it's um because it's got that kind of flippy lid thing to just get one or two hair grips out and then they keep in there really neatly stops them going all over your drawers so just a couple of little tips for you there so as you can see here i've got boxes of all sorts of stuff i've emptied out um, and I'm sorting the boxes into a box of stuff that will go back into the drawers, into my new drawer separators, formed of perfume boxes and Apple product boxes. Um, and then I've got some boxes of stuff that needs to be recycled, that needs to go to other rooms, and it's just being thinned down and sorted. I am trying to be as ruthless as I can, really. If there's any makeup product that's been open for just absolutely ages, like that was an eyeshadow, that, like a cream eyeshadow that had been open for ages and got all hard and disgusting. Um, all the makeup and kind of cosmetic products do have 
shelf life things on them, as in after a certain amount of time, there's a little symbol on the back, isn't there? After a certain amount of time, after opening them, you're supposed to throw them away. And I never do that um, until I come to one of these declutter things and think, ugh, how long has this been open? It's probably full of gunk and germs and things. Mascara is one especially because it goes in your eyes. You know, you really are supposed to check those out quite frequently to stop yourself getting eye infections and things. So when you're doing this kind of big makeup declutter, it's a good opportunity to be quite ruthless and chuck away anything that really is past its uh, use by date or open for too long and needs to be thrown away kind of date. So I've got, as you can see in this shot, a lot of stuff to go through. This dressing table has been a place to accumulate rubbish for ages. It started off really neat and organised and then the bottom drawers especially just have become a bit of a dumping ground for all sorts of rubbish. Other than tidying up my room, it's just because I bang it in there, do it later, bang it in there, do it later. And it's just, I could barely open the bottom drawers at all, which is ridiculous. So the aim for today is to really make it so that the dressing table has just got stuff I absolutely need to use in it and it's easy to find things. Um, one thing you will see, you can see flashing in the middle of the screen now, is my iPad. I do like to have something to watch while I'm decluttering because do you know what, it's super, super boring. So um, having a bit of Netflix or something on is definitely a good idea, just to keep you entertained and sort of uh, makes you stick with it if you're not totally bored. Um, and luckily at the moment Zara is sleeping so I can have something on. Oh, there's another carabiner with some small hair elastics on it. See how great that is to keep them all together? Uh, it's much easier than they were just all over my drawers. Oh look here, I'm cutting up a credit card. It's a credit card that has expired. I don't think I even have the account anymore and it was just shoved in the drawer. This is the problem. This is what I mean. So much stuff has just been dumped in these drawers. So tell me, do you have drawers like a dressing table or somewhere in your room or whatever? that stuff just gets dumped in. Are you guilty of this too? I know I am so guilty of it. So please let me know in the comments if you do this too. Let me know I'm not the only one. And let me know actually in the comments, when was the last time you did a declutter of all your kind of cosmetics and creams and stuff from your room? Um, was it recently? Is this something you do regularly? Or like me, has it been two years plus and it really, really, really needs doing? The plan is for this declutter, it's kind of the same way I normally tend to do things, which is sort things and don't put them directly back into where they're going to go because um, it depends how much stuff I'm going to be left with, which you don't really know till you finish throwing things out. So I'm decluttering into these curva baskets and then I can kind of assess, right, I know exactly how much of stuff I've got to put back in the drawers and which kind of category of item is going to fit into my newly found lovely Draw dividers, my little lovely crispy white apple box draw dividers. The other thing that always astounds me about decluttering is just how long it takes. I thought, oh, you know, just my dressing table I need to do on that box under the bed. I don't know, how long is that going to take? An hour? And I kind of thought I'd do it while Zara was still um, awake and I would then get on with some work while she was sleeping. But at this point in the video, I've already been decluttering for the hour I planned to do and then it was time to give Zara her lunch I've now put her to bed and I'm still going and there's just so much left to do so it's just a case of whenever I get to this stage I'm like oh what have I taken on how long is this going to take me am I ever going to get this finished because it's just when you've kind of made this kind of mess there's only one way out it's like going on a bare hand can't go over it can't go under it we've got to go through it so we're going through it and it's, it's just got to the stage where it's got to be finished. Come hell or high water, I'm really fed up at this point and I'm just like, oh, I want my room back being tidy. I was quite happy with all the clutter being hidden. But I know, I just know when it is really done, then it will be so much nicer and I'll be able to access my stuff and find things. I won't be sifting through loads of rubbish every time I go to get ready in the morning. At this stage, I thought, you know what, in for a penny, in for a pound, and I have decided to brave the box from under the bed as well as it's a huge box of stuff that is just a dumping ground so it's like um, medications that um, I was given when I was in hospital having the children and plast boxes of plasters, toiletries I've bought and haven't needed to use so I've put them under the bed and totally forgotten about them. Millions and millions of 
plasters and oh, there's just so much stuff in there that has just been forgotten about. So some of it needs to be thrown out, some of it just needs, needs to be kind of put together with other similar things. Look, all that is plasters. I mean, how many plasters have I bought and not used? But at least by putting them all together now, I'll be able to find them and use them. I had no idea I had so many plasters. We've got plasters for every different character under the sun. I think they've probably been bought in various shopping halls and just shoved under there, which is madness. So at least now I will be able to find them and use them. Uh, by the way, I absolutely love these pencil cases. You've heard me talk about these before. I use them for everything. So grab yourself some of those pencil cases. I'll link those below for you um, because they're really good, for, especially when you're doing sorting like this or get, keeping bits that go together together. Right, now for the fun bit, if there is a fun bit, it, which is trying to find homes for things in my newly sorted um, dressing table. Now, what I will say is, and let me know if you do this too, I kind of, it's a bit trial and error when you're trying to sort things out. You want to find a nice kind of way of organising things where everything has its own home, but then you don't know exactly which way it's all going to fit. So what I often do is end up putting things in and then taking them back out and putting them back in again, which seems a little long-winded. But you want to make sure that things really fit. So if there are like loads of lipsticks and they don't fit in whichever little case I put them in, and you just swap them into another case for example because um, you want everything to kind of fit perfectly and have its own home it does encourage you if you know if each I, if each section is kind of full not to buy more unnecessary stuff like I know my lipstick section is full but like it reminds me do not buy any more of this stuff you do not need it whereas if, if it's in a big open section you kind of it's like <laughs> you forget and you think oh I, can, I haven't got many of those so you want each section to kind of be adequately full without overspilling so everything just fits neatly like a perfect little jigsaw. So yeah, like I'm taking things out, I'm switching them around. I just want, I want it to be really easy and it's worth spending an extra few minutes doing this and fitting your different products into your different boxes so that it kind of works and makes sense for you because every morning then it would be so much easier. Right now, I've got to go and do the school run. Uh, so I've put everything on the bed and here we are back again after the school run because I couldn't have left it all just all over the bed like that. So back from the school run now and finishing up because it's got to be done before I make dinner. There's no way I could go make dinner and then go to bed for the night because there's just stuff everywhere. It would make me kind of want to cry. I kind of feel like decluttering. I, I hate walking away from it midway. I even, even hated going to leave to the school and then I just wanted it finished and done and dusted. Um, I am making progress though. Look, I have emptied that whole box from under the bed. That was full and now it has all been either sorted or the stuff in there has been thrown away. So these boxes here you can see I'm using are actually like zip, they zip flat. They're from Ikea. Like, like I said before, I'm kind of swapping things around, seeing which way things are going to fit best. Um, just to maximize space, it's all about maximizing space. I like to use these plastic cups to just sort things into like things like scissors and tweezers and stuff, smaller things so they don't just fall to the bottom of the drawer. I feel like if drawers are section properly, then you can find things easily and they're easier to keep tidy. Um, like two years ago, my, my drawers were all like this, and it just it, it, <laughs> over time it became a bit of a mess and a state, but. I think if you stay do on top of this, if you stay on top of this and you declutter on a regular basis, then you, it is much easier to keep on top of things. So I've got lots of hair brushes, so many hair brushes, um, and then lots of hair rips. I have no idea how I had so many of those. I literally only use them to put my hair up to go in the shower. And I have got loads of them, and then just hair products, hairspray. I don't use hairspray loads and loads. It's only when I curl my hair, which is really not very often. Um, but equally, it is something I will need at some point. Um, and then I've got a little pot in there, of kind of nail stuff. So nail files, a couple of nail polishes, cuticle oil, that kind of thing. That's nail glue for when I do have acrylic nails and they kind of lift and I stick them back down until I can get back to the salon, which I know is a bit naughty. Those are knit combs in my hand because sadly, when you have children, you want to de-knit them from time to time and check your own hair because there's nothing more disgusting than making knits by your own children. It has happened, like in fact, my eldest gave me knits when I was pregnant with my second one, that was pretty gross. Um, so yes, get a knit comb, de-knit your children on a regular basis, just check their hair. Um, so 
We are now on to one of the last drawers, just trying to fit everything in like a jigsaw puzzle. I didn't realise how much dry shampoo I already had. I bought so much of it and it was all stashed under the bed. I keep thinking I've run out of it and keep buying more. It's like, nope, I've got loads. Uh, the other good thing about these boxes, by the way, that I've got, I've actually bought two layers. So I've got a bottom layer and then I've got a second box on top. So I'm actually making the most of the depth of the drawers where if I just slung everything into the drawers, then I would not be maximising the space. I've got packs of tissues ready to stick in my handbag, those plasters that I found. Oh, those are those pore strips of your nose, which I love, which pull the blackheads out, which I didn't even realise I had those, so I've put those in somewhere nice and accessible that I can use those. Um, and we are nearing the end, we're nearing the end of this very long-winded, took so much longer than I thought, declutter, um, down to the last kind of basket. And this is all, in fact, this is the worst bit, you know, down to the dregs of the, what do I do with this? Everything's kind of nearly there, we're still down to the last few bits of rubbish that you just can't find a home for. This is this is the hardest bit of decluttering, this is the home stretch. This is where you really need motivation to think, no, being, being ruthless, oh, there you go, there's my tic-tac box. Uh, but yeah, what was I saying? This is the home stretch where uh, if you can stay motivated on this home stretch and really get that last basket of rubbish sorted and put away, it will feel so great when it's done, honestly. So let's have a look at our work. This is the, my top drawers in here. I've got kind of face and cheek products. And then in here, I've got uh, things for nails. I've got the, um, the hair things to stick my hair up just to go in the shower. And then at the back, I've got kind of scissors and hand sanitizer and things. I have so much of that, I found. And then over here, I've got my makeup brushes and stuff. They were all reasonably sorted anyway. Over here, we've got stuff for lips and eyeshadows and things, and a spare, um, a spare foundation that I bought and I've gone about. And then down here, we've got a couple of layers of things. So under there, we have got um, just hair, um, like hair protection spray, which I don't really use loads, but I don't, I will use, and some nail varnish remover, um, and then makeup bag and things, and I did empty that whole box. I was quite pleased with that. So this is our backpack station just here, and then these bags are ready to go away in it. These are the ones that I bought for the new term. So this is William's bag, and um, he's going into the juniors. This is Bella's, she's going into reception. And then this is Zara's bag for when she does play group and then starts nursery in the spring. Now, um, all these will go into the backpack station. This stuff behind is actually to go into school and kind of live in school most of the time. That's weather gear, PE kit, and that will stay in school unless it's half term, in which case it will come home for washing and that kind of thing. But these bags that are with us and coming home every day need to have a home where they're not on display, but they are kind of easily accessible uh, for the children in the mornings. So that's where the backpack station comes in. Now the problem is the backpack station is looking like this. It has become a bit of a dumping ground for all sorts of things, stuff that's accumulated. There's just two random little bags in there. That is William's bag from last year. Anyway, like I normally do, I am starting by emptying everything out. Now this is so that I can see exactly what I've got to deal with, but also so it stops me from just stopping the decluttering and getting bored because I've made a mess. So I'm giving the shelves a little wipe out with Zoflora uh, just while it's empty and then I'm going to put both of these bags ready to go in one of these compartments and close the door. Um, now this other stuff that is going to live in school won't have to have a home in the backpack station because it'll be in school most of the time. So I'm just going to bung this in this curva basket that I use to keep it collected and out of the way. Now these are their book bags. Um, they go into school like once a week and they live in school then they come home with their books and homework and things so they're going to be popped in there as well. So I'm starting off by like I normally do making a big mess and pulling everything out and really seeing what I've got to deal with. Um, so a lot of the stuff in this mess is kind of stuff that's been dumped. Like this is a happy birthday banner that a lovely friend made for me. We get out every birthday, but rather than it being put away in the birthday box up in my office, it had been dumped by the front door and ended up with all the backpacks and stuff, which is silly. So it's just a case of sorting things that need to go away. Now this is Zara's travel potty for when we're out and about and that needs to go in the car with us. It comes in to get washed and the, the inserts changed. These are seat liners. So what I'm putting together here is a box for Zara who's not yet in school but does the school run. These are spare clothes. All this stuff is in my potty training on the go video which I shall link in the cards now. 
So as you can see, in your backpack station, it's not just stuff that needs to go to school, it's everything you need to leave the house in the morning. So you've just seen sunscreen, that's a harness to strap Zara, who's my two-year-old, into her high chair for out and about, her training pants, knickers. So one of these boxes is very much a potty training box, but maybe if you had a younger baby, it would be full of nappies and things. Um, that's a weekend bag for Will. Um, those are ballet shoes for Zara for her classes on Fridays. So. Think about what goes in your backpack station. It's not just the backpacks, that's medication, which um, will go in the car, calpel and things for in case they're ill, but anything that goes into your car during the week needs to go in your backpack station. So I've got coloring pens and things for if we're going um, out for lunch perhaps, um, or out um, after school for food. All the stuff that needs to go with you needs to be by the front door and easy to grab. So next you can see I'm emptying out the drawers. I've got two drawers on this table next to my backpack station. And again, I'm emptying it out so I can give them a good wipe out. But also because I can't, I can't sort things until drawers are empty. I've got these little curver baskets that I'm putting in um, to sort things into. Uh, now, before I put things directly into the drawers, I'm sorting the, the mess from the floor into various baskets. One of the baskets is for stuff that will go into the drawers. Um, I'm kind of filtering it. One of the baskets is for stuff to go upstairs. And then another basket is for stuff that doesn't even belong to us. The amount of stuff I found in these drawers that doesn't even belong to us, it's um, various, you know, people that have left sunglasses in our house. I found um, a scooter light that I was looking for everywhere that William had that needs to call his scooter. Don't know where it was. Found it in this drawer full of junk. So pleased with that. There you go. That's some um, some Folly Farm tokens. So they <laughs> they have been sorted as well. I've got various straps and various nappy bags that I don't own anymore. All of these things were just there in my junk drawers by my front door, taking up space and stressing me out because I can barely open or close the drawers. So this really needs to be done periodically. It's quite natural for junk to accumulate, but once you've been through it, it's a bit of a job to do, but you will feel so much better because don't you just love a super organized drawer? Yeah, do you know what? Let me know in the comments um, if you feel the same way I do about decluttering. I always dread doing it. I always put it off. I always have to make this mess in order to make myself do it. But I always love it when it's done. And I just love having super organized drawers and things and being able to find things. And I find I'm more likely, and my family more likely, to avoid dumping junk when everything is quite organized because everything's kind of got home. There you go, that's a nappy bag that I don't need anymore. Um, so now I'm taking the stuff that was sorted ready for the drawer and I'm putting it into various compartments. Um, I've got the curver baskets, but also that was a little container that had takeaway food in it. So I've got, they're quite good for sorting drawers. I've got tissues ready to grab to refill the school bags in there. Uh, tape measure, that's a Tom Tom sat now, which we use almost never, but we sort of have to use sometimes. Um, we've got sunglasses, carabiner clips, they're fab. I've got so many uses for carabiner clips. You will have noticed those in lots of my videos. Um, so all of these drawers now, at least being sectioned off, we've got a chance of staying a bit neater. Those are Zara's super duper absorbent knickers for wearing in the car for if she's sleeping or whatever in case she has an accident. Anyway, so I'm now putting the potty training bag away. I've got her potty, her travel potty that's gonna go in there until we um, put it back in the car. Um, and then these, these are just things that are going by the front door that go in and out, car to house, car to house. Those are the things that will live by the front door. Um, I've got a backpack for me. Um, I've got the children's pee kit and stuff temporarily I'm putting um, in the backpack station. That will go to school and stay there, so I won't see that for a while. So I will have a nice empty box. Um, and then I'm just wiping down the surfaces taking away the other boxes and giving the place a little bit of a vacuum and then we're pretty much done. I've just got one basket now of stuff to return to people, one basket of stuff to go upstairs and there we go, it's nice and clean and tidy. So this is stuff that will go into the car. It doesn't look terribly organised but believe it or not it kind of is. It's just a few bags and the travel potty. Um, so it looks worse than it is, trust me. This stuff will all be going to school and staying there till half term. So we'll have a, 
an empty box there for my teenager wants to put his bag in there. This is pretty much all potty training stuff. Um, stuff for Zara, those are the seats in case she wheezes in her car seat, seat cover things. Um, and then in here, I've got William and Bella's bags and reading book bags. Um, so they're easy for them to grab, they can take them out themselves and put their um, drinks in them and things. Here we've got all the tissues ready to refill in the bags, that's very exciting. Um, and then the carabiners, like I said, I have found loads of those, I've put them all in one little bag. Um, uh, measuring tapes, one, two of those, a whole load of pens which I put in that takeaway cart and thing. I've got gloves and hats in there and some notepads. And then over here, these are the Uber training pants for basically if she's gonna be in the car for a long time, might fall asleep. Uh, the sat nav, and then loads and loads of sunglasses. So these white things on top of Sarah's wardrobe are things that I've already put away for her when she's a bit bigger. Her wardrobe's looking a bit cramped. I did do a declutter of the hanging space reasonably recently, but I need to go through that again. All these boxes have had so much stuff just shoved in them. Honestly, I've just have been bunging stuff in there. This drawer is basically a junk drawer. Um, so that's swimming costumes. That's not too bad. Need to go through it. That's hats. Need to add the rest of the hats from the rest of the room into there. That's knickers. Um, that one was sorted reasonably recently, so that's not too bad. That's muslins from when she was a baby. That's baby grows and vests that she can't wear now because she's potty trained and oh, 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 those drawers are so wedged I can't even open them. And it's vests that she can't wear because she's potty trained. So all of this has got to come out and just, it's been stressing me out for ages. I should have done this a long time ago, but seriously, just haven't got around to it. So yeah, all these vests have got to go, all these beautiful little baby grows. Some of them that I haven't even put on her because I bought them, um, thinking that I wouldn't potty train her just yet. But as soon as they are potty trained, I really feel that onesies and things just are not sensible because they just cannot get to the loo so what is the point in hanging on to things that i'm not going to use i would rather pass them on to friends or donate them or whatever they just they've got to go um because they're just clogging up her room at the moment um as i said in my last video i'm using these little curva baskets to sort things into kind of categories of where things need to go um and now you can see i'm actually sorting through these are stickers from my name tags i mentioned these in my previous video i use those for labeling up the children's clothes they are really great um, I will link those below actually um, if you fancy grabbing some of those but that's what those um, sticker things were I must admit decluttering is something I kind of put off and dread a little bit partly because it's a bit overwhelming and partly because it makes me really sad especially doing Zara stuff because when she's grown out of things there's no more babies and that really does break my heart so when I come across these things like these beautiful tiny little baby things like the hairband that she wore when she was newborn look I'm not getting rid of that the dolly can have that actually um, so I'm <laughs> being ruthless with most things but certain things it just really breaks my heart to part with um, so I'm trying to be as ruthless as possible I'm trying to pass on anything that could be useful to someone else without clogging my house full of stuff but there are one or two things just I can't part with I mean let me know how do you feel about decluttering baby stuff does it break your heart a little bit let me know in the comments if, if I'm just the only one that gets really emotional over this stuff you can see here that I am sorting and rolling up tights. So I'm checking the ages on them and checking that they're not too picky and yucky. And if they fit her and they're good enough, I'm rolling them up. I find that's the best way to store them. Um, you can kind of see what you've got a lot better. They don't look all tangled and awful. And it's just easier to find what you're looking for. So yeah, good way to store tights, especially if you're storing them like in a box within a drawer. Um, and then the rest of these boxes you can see all around, I've just got kind of different uh, categories of things. So the, the tights box you can see um, is obviously gonna go in the drawer. The bag behind me is stuff for donating, stuff that doesn't fit anymore. Um, and then I, I would just recommend using this method of having sort of surrounding yourself by different little um, baskets and putting things in different categories before you just kind of bung things back in the drawer I always find if I put things straight back in the drawer or something when decluttering then things don't end up fitting exactly in the place that I've chosen for them I end up with like either far too much stuff for a certain drawer or not enough stuff to fill it so I do find it's much easier where I am being sensible to um, put all the stuff I think will go in the drawers sort of together in a basket and then when I've got everything sorted into the various baskets then put it all in the drawers at the end. Um, so as you can see I wasn't joking a lot of this stuff is from newborn those were newborn nappies that she hasn't worn obviously since she was newborn um, that really need to go. Now for sorting bedding as you know I like to store bedding sets inside a pillowcase so you fold up the whole set of bedding pop it inside the pillowcase then you've got 
easily, you can easily find all of the bits that you need without any hassle at all. So next, there you go, those tights are sorted so they can go back in the drawers. Now, this is what I'm talking about, and this is why I brought this up. I'm actually folding these um, pyjamas in the kind of Marie Kondo, KonMari way, folding them into thirds and putting them straight back in the, the drawer. But inevitably, they won't necessarily live in this drawer because perhaps I'll need this drawer, which is a slightly larger drawer for something else. But anyway, I'm not taking my own advice here. This is probably why I'm bringing it up, actually, because um, these pyjamas, spoiler alert, did not end up living in that drawer. Right, so now to pull down the stuff that I put aside for Zara. Some of this stuff is newborn stuff that I couldn't bear to part with at the time, I just had to sort of put aside and I've got to decide which stuff I really am keeping for like a keepsake box and which stuff, you know, I've got to pass on because I can't keep it all. Um, I am thinking about having a blanket, like a keepsake blanket made out of some of it. Let me know in the comments if you've had that done or and whether you'd recommend it. Um, so this one is all bigger stuff that um, was Bella's, was the, um, that didn't fit Zara at the time I put it away. So I need to sort out the stuff, so anything that's kind of like three to four is really not going to fit here. She's very, very little. Um, but some of this can go into her wardrobe. There's nothing worse than sort of finding something that you did want to, to put on your younger child, but they've grown out of it already because it's been in storage for too long. So by going through things periodically um, and then ideally storing them by size as you're putting things away, then you're going to avoid that happening. So this basket I'm emptying out now is all the stuff that was in Bella's wardrobe that I'm putting away for Zara um, when she's grown into it. So there's loads of school uniform, there's two sizes of school uniform here, there's age three to four and four to five stuff, all of which Bella has grown out of, and I'm putting away for Zara. As you can see, I've got loads and loads of it. There's summer stuff, there's winter stuff. I'm barely gonna have to buy anything at all for Zara for school, because um, all of this stuff from her sister is still in pretty good nick, to be honest. Um, so that is all going away in the kind of, she's not gonna need it till she's three box, um, which can then go back on top of the wardrobe, but it's all fitting in a lot neater. Um, going through these shoes, I found a pair of shoes, ta-da, that uh, Zara can wear now, they're kind of her size at the moment, and the other shoes that she's not yet grown into, and she put well, that are all a bit big, are going into that and not needed till she's three box. So now that can all be zipped up and ooh, very heavy, popped back on top of the wardrobe. So now for just clearing up the floor, it was getting very close to bedtime. As much as I like to do everything in one day, if I can, sometimes being a mum, it doesn't work out like that. So I just kind of had to scoop it all up, put it in some baskets and deal with it the next day. And it's now the next day, hence why I'm wearing different clothing. So I'm going through a lot more pyjamas, some of which have come out of the wash, some of which have come out as Bella's room, as in the now too small for Bella, and trying to figure out what will fit Zara now and what won't fit Zara for a little while. Um, then going through all this, I'm sort of creating a little knicker drawer for her. Some of these are her potty training pants, which she wears over her normal knickers when we go out and about because she has an accident. And then she's just kind of got her normal knickers. Um, we're, we've got quite a lot of pairs of normal knickers because I think when you start potty training, it's worth having quite a lot of pairs um, in case they have accidents. And then you have to panic about getting all the washing done right now this second. Um, now for the socks, um, I like to store the socks kind of sticking up like this, um, if you can see what I'm talking about, because um, again, that's a nice easy way to do it. They might end up all bunged in, higgledy piggledy, but to start with, that's the way to do it. Um, so yeah, just it, all the stuff's been organised into it's all staying basket. <laughs> so the it's staying and it's current basket as opposed to the it needs to be put away or it needs to be um, donated or thrown out stuff. Uh, so all the, the stuff that's good for Zara now that um, was either in there already and fit her or has come from her sister needs to all go away. Um, so like I said, I would recommend just kind of putting all this stuff in baskets or sections or whatever because you can see here um, I realised the tights were not going to fit in that drawer because there were too many of them so I've moved all the tights into where the pyjamas were and then I have put the pyjamas into the slightly smaller drawer because there's not quite as many of them as there are tights so you won't necessarily get things right the first time but it equally once those the things are folded into those lovely little parcels it's really easy to swap them into another drawer anyway so it's not really the end of the world so the drawers in zara's wardrobe the bottom one is for coats only because the hanging space is a bit tight so i'm folding up coats and i'm folding up skirts um, and now you can see i'm just going through i'm not pulling 
everything out of her wardrobe like I normally do because I did that quite recently. So I'm just going through and doing a quick check for any bits that uh, don't need to be hung up in there because they're too small. And the dresses that I use for kind of spares, um, any dresses that come from my sister and are looking a bit tired or a bit sad that I wouldn't put on her first thing in the morning, I fold up and I put in those little um, cosmetic cakes. Uh, cosmetic case, not cakes, cosmetic case bags and I take them out with this as like potty training, um, she's had an accident, she needs to put something on, spares. so if it stays in the car forever and it doesn't go on it, it doesn't matter because it's a bit scabby, but basically those dresses, I've got like a section in one of her drawers for dresses that are going to be used for spares, if that makes any sense at all. Um, so this is cot bedding, cot sized bedding, we're not going to need that much longer because the cot is going, so that's being donated, so I'm doing that up so the person that we're sending it on to can know what it is and what it goes with, and then there's just some more bedding that all needs folding and putting away, um, and like I said, I do like to store the sheets and the um, the duvet covers inside the pillowcase, it's so easy to grab then, you just grab one kind of ready done set and you know you've got everything that you need. On to Zara's hairband drawer. I do like to organise things in rainbow order. These were just all a big mess but if I put these sort of, I put them like along one of these um, boxes and then rather than all being kind of mishmashy, they're kind of held in position so they're easy to find and not just not such a mess really. I'm just going to show you what I've put in all of these drawers. So this top drawer is for hats, some of them are Bella's and Zara's, so at least the matching ones when I grab their outfits are together. And um, in here we've got the hairbands which are kind of along the side of that box in rainbow order. It looks messier than it is but you know I think it's okay, I think it's going to be easy to find. I've got hair brushes in there, I've got ballet shoes, both um, ones that fit around to grow into in that little box. And then over here I've got these little wooden hearts which are quite sweet. They've got the days on them so when I'm feeling super organised I put her Zara's clothes out for the week including accessories out on a Sunday um, uh, just like I do for the children's uniform as they get older. So in here we have got swimwear, SPF suits, all that kind of thing, and some little pool shoes, that is all together. This drawer um, is quite empty and I'm okay with that because um, it's all right to have space in drawers. Um, in here, these are actually bits of pyjamas that I can't find the other half for, I know they're in the wash, I need to find them. These are dresses that I can grab easily to pop in the bag as spares uh, when we're out and about in case she has the accidents when we are potty training, which let's face it is a bit ongoing isn't it for a while even after they've finished potty training. In here we've got socks, both ankle socks and long knee socks. And then in here this is the pyjamas, they're all folded in pairs so you can grab one little bundle and you know there's everything that she needs to wear for that night. In here we've got knickers, both the kind of training pants version and the proper normal pants that she wears in the house. And then in here we've got tights which are all rolled up into these little parcels so they are really easy to find. Then in Sarah's wardrobe I've thinned it out a little bit and taken out anything that doesn't fit her. And um, These drawers at the bottom are things I've really tackled because you could barely open these, these were awful. So we've got ballet kit for when she starts the next class but at least I can find it easily and two dressing gowns, one of which um, is a handmade from William actually and one of which she's got that matches his sister. And then in here I've put skirts just to thin out the hanging space a bit. I've decided to put skirts in a kind of folded drawer way um, just because they're quite fluffy and they take up quite a lot of width in the hanging space. Coats the same, they were quite bulky in the hanging space so these four coats are now in a drawer rather than um, really squishing everything in her wardrobe. So let's start by taking a look around the office at what needs to be done. So this is my desk setup. I want to put the headphones up here on a hook. Happy enough with all the pens and things there, that works. I need to label all these different cables and things because I've got, as I'll show you in the drawers in a second, so many different cables, it's driving me insane. I do just very quickly wanna show you this. I obviously have one of these pop socket things on the back of my phone. So this is like a little stand, you can use them in the car as well. And that is so that I can uh, put my phone there so it's out of the way and charge it quite easily. And then if I wanna watch something on it, it could be sideways all that way up. So that's just a little aside. So all this just needs, a darn good clean and the headphones need to go up there. I want to put the clipboard up here on the wall so as I'm working I've constantly got my kind of 
to do and focus list for the week there inside these drawers so you can see they are kind of segmented off so that one that's pretty organized they are all my different sd cards and batteries that i use for filming this one these are my external hard drives i've got some more of those under there as well which i've got for all my footage and editing and things i've got my little gopro camera and stuff in here now these bits like like all these little all these wires i just want to put like little labels on them so i can see at a glance what they all are so it's not insanely annoying then i've got a section here where i keep notebooks and things so i'll probably keep that i've got all these bits at the back they all need going through i've also got not just these wires but if you look this box at the top here is absolutely chock full of wires so i need to go through all that perhaps that will be the next job so then in here as you can see i have used some other pencil cases and things for sorting out other various bits of wires little lights and things so this drawer isn't terribly disorganized but it's um it needs a little bit of something doing to it i've also got my old so this was my previous system of lists of what needed to be done and they were just on these cards and i kept those inside my planner but i think having it kind of front and center up on there will be the way to go in here is a little bit more mishmashy so i've got just like a random hairbrush just for when i need to brush my hair before i'm filming or whatever pens and stationery and things hand sanitizer just bits and pieces it just needs pulling out cleaning and putting back now one thing i have got which actually i bought a little while ago and i need to organize under here i'll show you under there in a second that's all right mess is this tissue box. I've got one of those in the lounge as well. So I'm gonna empty those into there. That tissue box can go back under there and then I've got a bit more space in my desk drawer for various things. And then under here, I've got a whole load of paperwork. I've got obviously my cable and things that are plugging in. I've got a box of just my handbag and things. This is kind of my stuff to grab before I leave the house. So I need a little bit of a sort, but I sort of intend to keep that as kind of a bits ready to go kind of box. And then in here, again, I've got some kind of full up notebooks, I've got some medication, I've got oh, just all sorts of bits. And then that's a sewing kit, got my headphones, things. It just all needs kind of sorting into something that isn't just a big mess. And then here we've got the shredder. Um, I've got under here, my second printer. Um, another iPad and various cases and things. So that lot does need a bit of an organize. Now, in here, this is a whole load of mess. So we'll tackle this area first, I think. If I can get that done today, I'll be really chuffed. And then any moving on to looking through and organizing all of this stuff, I shall count as a bonus. Let's get started. I am going to start by cleaning my desk because it's a bit dusty and gross. So I've got some Method Anti-Back. This is the wild rhubarb smell. It smells amazing and a microfiber cloth. So I'm just gonna have, so I take everything off my desk, give it a wipe, including the keyboards, which let's face it, get germy and yucky. I'm going to wipe over all the laptop stand and just everything on the desk, to be honest, fill up that tissue box and just clear the desk because I'm going to empty the drawers in my desk onto my desk so that I can sort everything. I think the only way to organize things efficiently is to pull everything out. The reasons for this are twofold. First of all, so you can actually see everything you're organizing and you don't miss anything. And secondly, so that you are committed because once you've pulled everything out, there is only one way through the mess and that is to organize it and put it away because it's so easy otherwise to just turn back isn't it close the drawers and forget about it now this drawer is disgusting it's full of hair because it had a hairbrush in it so i'm going to take my little handheld vacuum cleaner get rid of all the bits in there because that's quite disgusting the other drawer has got some bits and things in it as well so i'm going to vacuum all of that out too before giving it a little spray and wipe with my method anti-back and my microfiber cloth so now the drawers are at least clean i'm going to fill it up with these little trays now i know i've got some that you can see on the top of the desk but i'm going to sort everything into clean trays and then i will wipe out and clean the trays i've been using and they can be used elsewhere in the house now the fact that i'm moving everything from one tray into another tray again means nothing is going to go unsifted or unsorted unfiltered 
The thing that you've got to remember when you're organizing is it's not necessarily a linear process. Sometimes I sort things and then I pull them back out because things aren't fitting as well. You can see now I'm putting in some boxes and then I'm rejigging them around to see which way will fit best because I don't know how this is going to turn out. I'm just doing my best to kind of make the most of the space, fit everything in as best I possibly can. But that often involves a few, take it out, put it back in, try it another way, swap it around. Left hand drawer is coming together quite nicely. It wasn't too bad if I'm honest. It's the drawer on the right hand side that was full of sort of more junk and needed a lot more sorting. So I've got lots of like quite specific things to my work in this drawer, like my little cameras and things, my little tripods, things like that. Things I use all the time are needing to be in these desk drawers so they can be easily accessed. So the drawer on the right is full of more like bits I need through the day rather than more like worky bits. So things like lip balms and hand creams, they are there just so that hopefully I remember to use them because I have really dry lips and really dry hands. So if you're trying to remember to use lip balm or supplements or hand creams or wherever it might be, put them in your desk and then hopefully they will actually get used. So the other bits that are in this desk are obviously stationary. I've got some, apparently three tins of Vaseline I've pulled out of this drawer. I do not need three tins of Vaseline. My lips are not that dry in a drawer. So those can go elsewhere in the house. And you can see in the corner of the screen, I've got some pencil cases that I've just put behind me. That is because those are needing to go in with my wire sort. Honestly, the number of different wires I have are just insane. I'm sure I've got more wires than devices. I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments. Is your house overrun by cables for things? I've probably got more than most people because I've got cameras and things. But honestly, the amount of cables we've got just kind of bonkers. So we're nearly there with these drawers. Nearly there. We can nearly move on. Obviously, I've got more of these little plastic boxes. These are the ones I don't need for this project these drawers so they're just being cleaned out I'm vacuuming them and then anti-backing them so they are good as new I bought another set of these in that home organization haul which I did for the office so if you haven't seen that video yet make sure you check it out after this one and I know we're not even halfway through this video yet but if you are enjoying it please take the time to give it a like leave me a little comment down below and subscribe so you do not miss any upcoming videos so that's the desk emptied out it's clean, or at least it was clean. It's gonna need another wipe because I've made so much mess all over it. I've resorted all the boxes so that they all fit. I'm maximizing the space, but I'm now at the stage of the project where I'm looking around just like, why did I start this? I've made more mess. It looked okay before I started, but I kind of feel with all these decluttering projects, you've kind of got to break a few eggs to make an omelet, so the saying goes. So I've got a load of these ready to go into another room or perhaps when we organize all that behind me. Um, I'm now gonna try and put my desk back together and put the bits on the wall. The good news is I remembered why I needed an extra hook and it's for this cable which attaches between my computer and my microphone. Um, and it is a bit of a pain because it's a really, really long cable. It's cable tied away. I don't just want it on my desk. So I thought I would hang it on a hook there and then it's not taking up space in my desk because it's quite bulky because it's so long. And I thought that would get it out of the way, but easily accessible because obviously I use that quite a lot. And I do like to, to like put things away rather than leaving everything hooked up to my computer. I like to leave my kind of workspace as clear as possible. So that's what the other hook is for. So I'm gonna put all this back together and then at least I've got to a level where if I've got to stop because the children are just needing me or whatever, or I've run out of time, I've got to go make dinner. It doesn't matter so much. So we'll finish this little section and then I need to get on to sorting wires because honestly the number of wires I've got and I can never identify which one's which. So I'm going to do a bit of labeling. First, get the desk put back together. So I'm gonna give the desk another wipe over only because I've made such a mess pulling all the bits out of the drawer and then I can put my computer back. It is on that raised up stand. I use a separate keyboard because my physio suggested I do that because it was better for my back and my neck and things like that because I'm not hunched over while on the computer. Now let's get this clipboard put up on the wall with one of my command hooks. I'm just seeing exactly where I want it. It's a terribly official process. 
It's really simple. You just clean the wall. I don't really need to do that, it's clean. And then you take the strips, you take off one side of the strip and you press it against the wall for 30 seconds. And then you take off the other side of the strip, you stick the hook onto the wall and then press down really firmly. And then easy as that, it's ready to go. You can't hang anything on it for an hour, but then it's, it's that simple. Even I can do it. I've got lots of different command hooks I use around the house. These have got the wire bit on them, but lots of them are like a firm plastic. I will link them below along with everything else I'm using in this organization. Now, this is a large command hook. These are also the kind of hooks I use to put up my wreaths for like Christmas and things. And the other hook that I'm going to use to hook up my headphones. So you stick one side to the wall and then you struggle apparently to pull off the other side. There you go. And then you've pressed down really, really firmly and then just leave it alone for an hour. So the wire that hooks that microphone to my computer is that loopy thing. And I'm gonna use the other command hook and I'm gonna hook that down there so that the wire can just live down there out of the way. I can grab it really, really easily if I need it, but I don't have to look at it because it's big and bulky. I'm not sure how well you can see this because I'm literally filming between my radiator and the edge of my desk. So that is where the hook is going. It's not terribly exciting, but I find it exciting because it's getting a troublesome piece of wire, a piece of wire that I really need, but a big bulky thing off my desk. It's not taking up space in my desk drawer. So it makes me happy. Little things make me happy. You can't see it very well, but it's there and it's useful. And in an hour, it's gonna have the wire on it. Well, I'm now pleased to say that my desk is looking kind of as I want it. Um, I've taken the stuff back down off the hooks because she's supposed to leave it for an hour i rarely do that um so that the glue dries properly before you put everything up but i have got the hook for my headphones and the hook for my clipboard so that's looking pretty good desk drawers are organized pretty neatly i will show you that at the end now it's really tempting to kind of just stop here but i've still got all these kind of packets of random wires and things so rather than stopping I'm gonna go against everything in my being and pull some more stuff out. Um, I'm gonna pull out this box down here, which has got some kind of electrically gubbins in it. This one, which is actually wedged full. And I'm just gonna try and sort leads by sort so I can have all the USB to lightnings together, all the whatever other types of uh, lead we've got in the house. So if anyone needs a new lead for anything, rather than ordering one on Amazon, we can actually just get one from the house that we've already got because we have so many wires and leads, but you know when someone needs one, can you find one? No. So that's my next job. I don't want to. I really want to stop now. I really want to just put all this back together and make it look nice again. But I'm in it now. Must keep going. Now I'm gonna pull out this box full of random stuff that is underneath my desk. And then I'm gonna reach for the dreaded box of wires, which is in the top of my Calyx unit that is so stuffed that I can barely put it away into the Calyx unit because it barely closes. Now I'm gonna empty everything out bit by bit onto the children's play table and sort it. I'm gonna utilize some of these baskets. People ask me, why have you got so many baskets in your laundry room, Ray? And it's partly because I use them for things other than laundry. So things like this, it's really good for sorting things into the carrying things around the house, all that kind of thing. Anyway, if you want to see my full laundry room tour, then I will link that video below and you can check all that out because the laundry room is actually the other side of that Calyx unit you can see behind me. Now, as I'm sorting through all these wires, you can see I've got a lot of different types of wires for all different types of things and they're all just jumbled in, mostly tangled, which is not a good way to store wires because it damages them, just in a jumbled mess. So I can never find anything I want. I know I have a lot of wires, but if I can never find the actual wire that I'm looking for for the device that it's needed for. Now, all of those appear to be the same type of wire. I think they're micro USB, but I can't be entirely sure. So if you saw my office organization haul, you'll know that I bought a lot of these little clear plastic bag things. Some of them are more like pencil cases and some of them are more like the kind of clear plastic bags you would take if you were going on holiday uh, to put sort of toiletries and things in. So I find those are a really good way of sorting and organizing things because you can see them. They're easy to store. They're not too rigid, so they fit neatly into spaces and things. I've now got two of my girls helping me. I use helping in inverted commas because they really just go, mummy, what's that? What's that? Is that good? Is there anything for me? And now they've run away because they actually realize that sorting things like wires is really, really boring. Yes, true story, this is a boring job, but how satisfying will it be when it's done? 
So I'm just pulling out now things of that box at the back and some of them, a lot of them actually, are kind of things for my camera, bits of USB leads, some microphone stuff. I've got, I found a million plugs, look all those plugs I found for all our various devices. So some of this stuff is sorted, some of it is still yet to be sorted. And at this point I'm wondering and why I've done, why I've pulled all this out, why, why, why. I'm questioning my life choices and thinking that starting this project was a mistake. But I have to press on because look at the state of the place. At this point, I just want someone to send help. Just send help right now because I can't move. I literally can't leave the room because there is so much stuff everywhere. So I'm stuck. The only way out is to finish tidying and sorting. Let me know if you've ever got to this stage of a decluttering project. And quite frankly, if you haven't got to this stage at a decluttering project where you're wondering, why did I start this? You haven't made enough mess. And you haven't pulled enough stuff out. So I'm going to see this as a positive. And the fact that I've made such a mess is a good thing because it means I'm going deep into it and really sorting all the corners, really going through everything that needed sorting and leaving no lead or wire unturned because that's what I'm swimming in at the moment, leads and wires. Now, obviously, it depends which room you're sorting. If you have a home office, let me know. Are you working from home at the moment? What's your kind of setup? Obviously, I work from home permanently, which is why I kind of have a space carved out. But I know a lot of people are sometimes working from home. Will you be working from home more permanently, even when the world goes back to normal? What's your setup? Let me know down below. Right, the lead situation. So I've got a lot of different types of leads now. And rather than labeling the individual lead which was sort of my original plan I'm just now going to label the bag with the type of lead that is in that bag because I have got so many so micro USB I think some of them are called micro USB I don't know I really really probably need to google it but they're the little tiny ones that aren't like flat there's slightly different shape on the top and the bottom and they're very small pretty sure they're micro USB anyway that's what I'm calling them so at least for my purpose I'll know and what have we got here? The next bag is, oh, these are the lightning cables. We've got a lot of those. Those are mostly for like Apple devices, primarily for iPads and iPhones. Of course, they do annoying things and then change the lightning cables to something else, don't they? Like a USB-C or something. They've got one Apple Watch cable, which hasn't even been taken out of the packet. I know I have got other Apple Watch cables somewhere, so I need to find those. And then let's, what have we got next? We've now got... Oh, 30 pin. Now they're the old Apple cables. Now I know some of our devices still use those, but we've got more cables than devices. How has that happened? I have no idea. Finish doing this last label and take you on a little tour around the office to show you what I've done so far and how I have organized the things that we've done so far and also what is still left to do. I gotta say, all this organizing is flipping exhausting. So I'm gonna show you everything I've done and how I've organized my desk and the boxes I have gone through and organized. And then in the next part of this video, I'm going to tackle the boxes I haven't touched. And in there, I've had a quick glimpse. We've got a lot of craft supplies, like loads and loads and loads of craft supplies, but they're all kind of dotted. So I wanna go through all of those and make sure that they are organized and ready to use. There are a lot of the children's like educational toys and things, like counters and like the counting bears, the counting dinosaurs, the stringing letters, all those kind of bits. Again, it just sort of dotted um, and need to just be organized properly. And then I've got like products and stuff I'm sent for work. Um, it's just a whole lot of stuff. Plus, I've still got to go through our gift boxes with all the cards and the wrapping paper and then other ones that I've got as gifts for adults and children um, that I buy in advance when I see things that I like. Anyway, I'm going to flip the camera around now and show you what I've done. So, my desk, I've got my headphones up, I've also got the clipboard up. Other than that, my desk is looking pretty similar, pretty clean and clear. Into the drawers. So. We've got these boxes. I know I had some of them before, but I've now got them all the way across. So we've got pens, we've got these note cards and the previous week's to-do lists and then planner stickers are under there. In here, we've got my notebook, planner and journal. This is a little GoPro section. So that's my camera, the like little um, GoPro, what are they called? Memory cards. Um, now, I've probably talked about this before. The cards, I label a color and then up on my board up there, I say which video is on which color card. So I've got my GoPro charger. The cables I have got totally separate, but I've got the like essential ones I need all the time. I've just got one of in here. So that is the GoPro cable, which is USB-C, I think. I'm not sure. 
In here um, I've got all the SD cards and batteries for the camera I'm filming on right now, which is my Canon. And then these are all the external hard drives, both past and present, that I use. Um, rather than leaving them out all the time to clutter up the desk, I like to put them away and they don't get damaged then either. Into here, I've got my glasses, which are pretty much anywhere for driving. Let's face it, I don't drive far at the moment. And working on the computer, just some like little hand and nail bits. I'm trying to remember to put like huge oil on, so I'm putting that there. These are just like one of each essential cable that I've left in that packet. And I've got some hand sanitizer, face cream, lip balms and things, um, some like painkillers and supplements that I take to sort of remind me to put, to take them because they're there. Hairbrush and nail file, a little thing to tie my hair up with when I do a little workout in the morning. Some sticky labels. I've got my essential postage opening gizmos and that's to block out addresses. Scissors, tape. I've got these little Tipex mouse things. I don't use those much, they're back there. And my tape measure. So that's my desk drawers. In here, I've kept it pretty um, empty because I don't know what I might need to add to this. All this is my labeling stuff. So I've got my label maker, the label making cartridges, uh, the like, refills and the thing to plug in the wall, the charger. That's my headphones case. I guess I could put that in with the other electronics and things, but I've shoved that in there for now. I'm probably going to rearrange that when I've finished doing some organizing, but at the moment I kind of want to leave as many boxes as kind of empty as possible as I can. Obviously that's just an empty basket. So this in phase two in the next video, I will have a rejig of that. I haven't even attempted all the filing stuff under there. So don't even look at that. And in here, I've just put all of the medication I found in one packet. I've got my handbag, my gloves, my hat, my slippers, all my kind of grabbables in there. Over to, <laughs> ignoring the cloth on the floor, over to, this is literally just all things to do with cameras and photography. So it's all my uh, spare SD card things. Those are like fluff things to go on the camera, um, to like wind muff things for the mic. All the, just all the bits that are to do with my cameras are all in there and I've just bunged them in so I know they're all in one place. And here we've got headphones, all manner of, all manner of external hard drives that are kind of older ones that I'm not using at the moment, but I don't really want to get rid of. All these are different screen protectors for all the different devices that we own, because generally when you buy screen protectors, they come in multi-packs, like the tempered glass ones. So I've filed all those in there. Spare, like, um, what are they called? Cases. And then in here, I've got plugs. These are mostly USB plugs that came for, you know, for phones and stuff but at least they're all in one place. So if we need to like go away or whatever, imagine we can go away, I can grab those. And those are spare smart plugs for setting up new Alexa devices. I'm gonna bang these in here. We've got, what are they called? Micro USB. I'm still not sure if they're all micro USB, but you know, close enough, close enough. Micro USBs. We've got lightning cables, millions of those. There's only one Apple Watch cable in there, but I'm sure I have got more Apple Watch cables I can add to it. And I still don't know the name of these, but they're four external hard drives and I've got loads of them. And then I've got loads of these 30 pin things. We don't, I think we've got one or two devices that still take 30 pin, but at least all the cables are all together. So I'm gonna put that back up there. So in the next video, I've got to tackle that basket on the top up there and all these other boxes. So all bar, two of the 25 boxes. I've also got to tackle this little corner over here. There's four boxes in there. And then the office should be pretty organized, but I know you guys have been desperate to know what I keep in there. There's also cleaning products and all sorts, but I shall reveal it all in the next- As you can see, the office is currently looking pretty tidy on the face of it until you look under the surface inside a lot of those boxes. So a couple of them got sorted in the last video, but if I'm honest, a lot of them are still a big old mess. In here, this is one of the ones I did sort. I went through all this and sorted all the wires. So they're in actual corresponding wire bags. They're all labeled. That box 
is just, it's as organized as it's gonna get. I've got the plugs together, I've got the screen protectors, the spare ones together, I've got the removable hard drives together, all the wires, as you can see, are labeled. I still don't know what that kind of cable's called, by the way, I just know it's an external hard drive cable. If anyone knows the actual official name of that cable, please do let me know in the comments. But they're labeled, it's easy enough for me to understand and find something. My aim is to get all the boxes to that level where it is a box of one particular type of thing without a load of stuff dumped in there. And when you open the box, it's not just a mishmash of stuff, it's actually organized. So we're going to start today by organizing the children's educational resources and toys. So I keep these separate to their other toys because these are the bits that I pull out when we're trying to do homeschool or hopefully when homeschool is a thing of the past, when they need help with homework, that kind of thing, or I want to do like a really specific activity with them. So I want to keep them separate so that they can play with them, but they kind of stay together and don't just get jumbled in with the rest of their toys. So these are called lacing letters. They're really good. They are, well, there's a bag of lacing numbers and there's a bag of lacing letters. So they're good for a couple of things. They're good for doing things like uh, sums and things, but they're also good for stringing up. They just make necklaces out of them. They're good for fine motor skills, but the boxes are really kind of flimsy. They're all smushed and broken. They're kind of a bit sharp. That kind of plastic box often gets a little bit almost dangerous um, when it's it's damaged, like it has been be, being battered in and out of these boxes. So I'm decanting those into these bags. So the original plastic tubs that they came in are gonna be recycled and then the actual toys are gonna to be stored in those zippy bags. So they're much easier to bring out and put away again. I do actually find a barrier to using something. Sometimes if everything's a bit messy and overwhelming or hard to put away or the packaging's all broken, it doesn't get used or played with as much, just on a subconscious level, you just think, oh, I just won't bother. So when things are neater and more organized, then they're easier to pull out one thing, play with that one thing, and then put it back. I've got the children helping me today. I say helping in kind of air quotes because if I'm honest, decluttering and sorting is easier without children around because they are largely unwilling to want to part with anything. It's like that piece of scrappy paper that I wrote on three years ago and just scribbled on. I really need to keep that. I need it, I need it. Mm, do you, but do you. So they are helping today, but as you can see, they're mostly just playing, not helping. So they're just with me and helping because they're with me and I'm looking after them as opposed to because this is useful to have them there. So I do get them involved as much as possible around the house. They're trying to tidy up their own toys and things, but for a proper sort out, given a choice, you're probably better off doing it if you have the opportunity when they're in school or in bed or whatever, because you're going to get more done and you're going to be able to be a little bit more ruthless. So we're just sorting, continuing to sort. We've got all those tweezers. Um, one thing you will find when you sort is you have no idea how much of one thing you actually have. Like I had no idea. We had so many pairs of those squeezy tweezer things, which are good for um, encouraging pencil grip and sort of developing those skills and muscles that they need for good handwriting. So they use those tweezer things for picking up the little counting bears and little toys and things when they're playing games, but that's what they're for. Anyway, I had no idea we had so many pairs of those. Clearly I kept picking them up and sets and things, but when you sort and everything has a home, you actually end up buying less stuff because you think, oh, actually I've already got a lot of it because it's all in one place. This is something I found time and time again. I remember last year when we moved, I was convinced before the girls went back to school they would need all new hair bobbles and things because they just didn't have any. I was convinced they had none. And then when I pulled everything out and sorted it all, they had about a million navy hair bobbles. I mean, like a million of them, honestly, because they were just one in this toy box and one in that place and they were all over the place. So when I pulled them all together, I realized just how much I had and then I didn't need to buy more because I realized what I had. So. Being organized and keeping things together so you know what you've got will actually end up saving you money in the long run because you can see what you've got. So as you can see, it is now time to put things back in the box. My kind of method for organizing is to pull everything out of where it's eventually going to live sort it all and only put things back in the box that are neatly sorted. I'm loving these plastic uh, zippy bag things, which are cosmetic bags that I picked up in that first video in this mini organizing the office series, which it was my organization haul. So I bought lots of these bags and I'm thrilled with them because I can see what's in them. They are sturdy enough for packaging things in. I've actually fit a lot more things in that box because the tubs were mostly circular and they're not fitting, not maximizing the space properly. So I fit a lot more and it's a lot more neat. 
The children have now gone to play with their daddy who is now home, so I can actually get on with a little bit more. I'm actually going to sort out all these. These are, um, they're supposed to be for a wall, for like a classroom, I think. I bought them absolutely years ago. They're flowers from Jolly Phonics, so we use them for games and things. They're basically pretty flashcards, but I haven't even taken the more advanced letters and uh, words out of the packaging. So I'm going to answer a text message. I'm going to take them all out so that they can all go into a package and they'll just take up less space. So by taking them all out of the, the popper thing that they came in, I don't even know what that's called, you know, the, the original card. And then they are going into that A4 popper folder. So they're there and ready to use. These are really good for using for games and things, for reading. They're just a little bit more interesting sometimes than just reading plain things on um, a page flashcards especially pretty flashcards can be really really handy so i'm transferring some of those letters they came with that puzzle and they're fab those little wooden letters are really good for spelling games and things for homework um, these are the other jolly phonics flashcards and they're held together by a carabiner i've actually hole punched the flashcards and i like if you hole punch a set of flashcards and you punch them together and put them on a carabiner they keep them all together so if you've got a specific set of cards that is a great way of keeping them together and then they're going into one of those plastic bags just to kind of protect them from getting really scuffed edges so these are the stringing letters the other pack was stringing numbers i think this is my literacy box the last one was more numeracy um, but we're having very much the same kind of thing so this is just flashcards and things and more wordy stuff and the last one was more for counting and numbers and fractions and all that kind of thing. Now considering if you think of the opening shots when my office was nice and tidy and now we're looking at the place and it looks like we've been burgled. It's a bit stressful, isn't it? Decluttering, it can feel like a bit of a mammoth task. One of the most difficult things I find about trying to get motivated to declutter is where I can't actually see the clutter. Like if there's a surface and it's covered in clutter, then you get sort of instant gratification from that, don't you? You clear the surface and suddenly it's clear and then things have improved. Whereas if things are looking reasonably clear and tidy around your home and you're planning to declutter something that's hidden, like all these boxes or a cupboard or something, that can feel like, oh, my house is not that bad and I want to pull it out and get it all messy then you can feel a bit sort of, oh, do I really want to do this? And this is the problem I found with my office. This is why I've procrastinated this job for such a long time, because on the surface of it, it's looked okay. But the truth of the matter is, all these boxes were a total mess. I'd just been kind of blindly going, oh, don't know what to do with this. I'll shove it in with this box of other unsorted rubbish. And it's too easy to do because clutter attracts more clutter. So as soon as I've got a box and it's a dumping box, then as soon as I don't know what to do with something, it's like, ah, I'll add it to the other box of miscellaneous junk. However, I would never dump some miscellaneous rubbish I don't know what to do with in a sorted box because it wouldn't make sense to me. So the clutter would attract more clutter, whereas if I've got all these boxes, hopefully by the end of this, it will all be sorted. Then if I don't have a box of miscellaneous junk, then I won't have more miscellaneous junk. As you can see, we've had a change of outfit because it is another day. So we're just showing you through some of the boxes I have sorted. So the first one um, is the sorted one. The one I've just pulled out there is my birthday box. That needs doing. So I'm just trying to figure out in priority order what needs doing. This is a box of stuff that needs sorting. This one is a box of ooh, craft supplies that needs sorting. As you pull out the boxes, look, you can see through to my laundry room. Can you see through there? A few people actually have said, why don't I leave that, uh, leave a few boxes empty. Um, because they thought it would look better but that's why it's because it <laughs> makes a wall into my laundry room oh, there's daddy for being totally unhelpful anyway these are the boxes i'm going to pull out as you can see i'm doing this video across a few days and it's to avoid overwhelm in theory it's, it's in theory to avoid overwhelm ah printer cartridges this is what i was talking about this is actually for my old printer two different sets of printer cartridges this happened in the old house what happened is I needed printer cartridges. I didn't have anywhere that printer cartridges lived because I hadn't organized my office properly. So I thought, oh, I don't have any printer cartridges. I shall order more printer cartridges. And it turns out this happened a couple of times over. And now I have a million printer cartridges for a printer I don't even use that much. Now this is a frame. I use these frames in my organization station and lots of other places around the house. I shall link my printables below 
If you want to join my club and get the ultimate mum bundle, then you'll get all those printables and you can pop them in some of those frames and use them around your home for organizing. Now we're getting on to a box that is mostly craft supplies. So again, all those little baskets around the edge, the plastic boxes, I'm sorting things into. My aim is to totally empty the boxes that belong in the calyx, sort them into categories and only put things back into the boxes that are organized, that have been filtered through. So that is a bag of mostly pens that had run out. I mean, for goodness sake. The idea is that the only things that make it back into the box are sorted, filtered and organized. And you've got to break a few eggs, I said this before, in order to make omelets and to declutter because if you just pull out a couple of things and you don't fully empty things, you don't make a bit of a mess first. You're not going to really sift through and get rid of all the junk. And until a box is totally organized, until you've made this level of mess, well, I personally can't get through to the other side. Now I'm at that stage of the declutter now where I'm going, why? Why did I start this? Why did I start this? What was I thinking? Why? I was quite happy with all the clutter hidden and I didn't have to look at it. And now there is only one way through it. Because that's the other thing, of course, by making a big old mess. If you just open a drawer and think you'll have a little sort through and you don't make a mess, it's so easy to just close the drawer and go, ah, uh, maybe not. Ooh, carabiners. Carabiners are so, so handy. If you're not using this trick yet, do a hole punch, a little hole in the corner of one of these popper folders and attach it to your child's school bag with a carabiner. This is just a little t bonus tip. And then letters that you want your teacher to see or letters that are coming home from school pop them in there and you might actually get the letters from school you know mind-blowing because I know before I did this my children never used to bring letters home and any things I had to send into the teacher never quite made it there so that's just a little bonus tip while I found these carabiners to share with you so where was I I was talking about how easy it is to give up on decluttering if you don't make a mess first oh there we go lots of carabiners so back on track if you don't make a mess it's just so easy to just close the drawer and think oh maybe another day maybe i'll just procrastinate it some more whereas when you've made a mess there is only one way through it and the only way through it is to sort it and the idea of decluttering is daunting when i'm at this this stage of decluttering this middle of the declutter i just think why did i start it i didn't it didn't matter that much to me but you know what? When it's got done, it's so good. I mean, look at the moment. I'm like, wow, overwhelm. Where do I? I literally don't know where to turn. I literally am just like staring, going, I don't know what to do. But the answer is just keep doing it. I don't know if you can see. I've got my little AirPods in. So basically, uh, while I'm doing decluttering, I like to take my mind off it largely. So I will. I have one in at a time, so I can still listen out for the children. And also, if I only have one earbud in at a time, then when it goes flat, you can swap it and charge it for the other one. Anyway, if you put an, an audiobook on or some music, or you can chat to a friend, sometimes listening to um, my friends while I talk on my AirPods is the only way I can actually fit in a phone conversation while I'm doing things. Right, as an aside, that is a whole load of beads that came from various craft sets and now is all in one place if the children want to make necklaces. Anyway, um, AirPods, if you've got headphones in while you are doing these jobs, you're just more likely to keep going with it. So you can have just general music on, but I do like to listen to perhaps something like maybe the children are like watching TV in the other room or whatever um, with my husband. So it's like having booming music isn't necessarily the answer. Right, craft box. We've now got a reasonably sorted craft box. We've got all the pens and the various things sorted into these pencil cases around the edge and they're all sorted by type. So we can just grab what we need. Those are the stylus pens I was talking about. They came, they were really cheap from Amazon. They came in a multi-pack. Glue sticks, we go through a lot of glue sticks. But that is organized. We can now find those craft supplies. These are little craft kits and I've sectioned those off into these A4 popper folders. So before these were just a big mishmash, but now I can pull out one of those folders and we can do a kit because I'm not very artsy. If you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm, I wish I was a Pinterest mum and I was like really good at art stuff and I'm really not. So I do lots of like art kits and things with the children. Um, and often you'll buy an art kit and there are like six kits in it and we've only used three so there are some spares now we've got all those printer cartridges together guys look how many printer cartridges i've bought and that's because i didn't used to be organized enough to know where they were and I just kept buying more insane i know so i mean that's probably enough printer cartridges to keep me going until the children are old and that's not even the printer i use that's my old printer <laughs> insane but never mind 
Anyway, um, now to sort through another box. More boxes. Let's keep going. I really don't want to. At this stage, my thoughts are, make it go away. I just want to stop. I want to close the door on it all and uh, never go back in. But obviously, I can't do that because I couldn't work in this mess. Right, this box, reasonably sorted. Those are popper folders, small and large, paper ready to use, and notebooks that I've picked up that could either be used as gifts or for me to use when I need a new notebook for work. I go through a lot of notebooks because whenever I'm working at a computer, like editing or whatever, like I'm doing now, then I have a notebook next to me and I'm just making notes about, I don't know, other things that need to be done in the edit or whatever. This is a whole box of Play-Doh. All that in one place. There we go. Just like that. Okay. Still sorting, still finding more craft supplies, but at least now we've got a box that is, you know, craft supplies rather than just stuff. When I find more craft supplies, I know where to put it. Now, because it's just me generally that goes into these boxes, I'm not going to bother labeling the outside of them because um, I just, I don't want to see the labels. I want it to look like a wall because sometimes I film in front of it or whatever. I could label the other side of them and two of the boxes do belong to my husband. When I do the full office tour, um, I'll show you all that stuff, uh, which will probably be the next video uh, in this mini series anyway, whether it's the next video on my channel or not. Uh, but make sure you are subscribed to my channel so you don't miss it. Um, anyway, what was I saying? I don't really need to label the outside of the boxes because I know which box is which because I'm the only one that uses them. We're currently going through my party and birthday box that was just a mishmash of stuff and is now gonna be organized. So one of the pencil case thingies is now full of candles because I bought lots of different candles. I bought big packs of number candles and things uh, because it worked out cheaper to do that than buy individual number candles. And now they're all in one of those plastic zippy bags rather than just being sort of strewn all across the box. I've got cards and things I bought in multi-packs and they are going into one of those A4 popper folders. So when it's someone's birthday, I've got a load of cards that are really nice that I've already bought that I can choose from. It's a good way to be organized, buy in advance, and it works out a lot cheaper too to buy things in bulk. I've also got little packs of wrapping paper that I've picked up. They are going in there too. So this box was always a birthday box and has been for quite a number of years. But before now, it was just... You'd open it and it's like you couldn't see the wood for the trees. It was just stuff. So now it is getting sorted into these kind of these popper folders. It's a good way to divide these boxes because these Calyx unit storage things, they're great. They swallow so much stuff. But if you don't subdivide the boxes, they're a bit big and they just end up being stuff, if that makes sense. Not being able to put your hand in and grab what you need. So that is now a bit more organized. That's a tablecloth that I use for parties and all the other stuff in there is at least grabbable and organized. That is the old wipeable tablecloth from the table, which I'm gonna use for just Play-Doh or if the children are doing like paints or something that I don't want to stain the normal tablecloth thing we use. Now we're going through a couple of boxes where I keep gifts that I've bought. So some things are gifts I think that might be nice for a child of a certain age because obviously when the world is normal, my children go to birthday parties. So when I'm shopping, I pick up presents that I think would be appropriate for children of their age. Now we have moved on to another day. My clothes have changed again. So what I'm doing now is going through every box and checking them systematically to go right which boxes need sorting still. And I'm gonna stick a yellow sticky thing on the boxes that I still need to do because we're reaching the end. We're on the home stretch, people, of this office organization project. There are just three left. Three left to do on that big unit. Now, going through over here, some of these are empty. Look, those are the printer cartridges for my new printer, which is not actually um, cartridges, they're like refill things. The things at the bottom, they are the children's, the boxes uh, at the bottom, they've got like one file each, and I keep things like, I don't know, swimming certificates or whatever that are specific to each child in there. So those are the remaining boxes left to do. So we're getting there. Bear with me, we're getting there. Come on, home stretch, we can do it. Last few boxes, last few bits. So let's pull it all out and make some more mess. Now, this is largely a lot of shredding other than, ah, oh, see, in amongst all the bits of paperwork, we find some really gorgeous things like that. Now, those things are to be kept and filed, obviously. So I'm shredding and filing the things that I needed to shred and file from that box, which had just been stuff that was dumped. These little boxes, I'm just going through, they're the children's bits from school and things and just putting those in order. This is another little box of gifts and such, which are uh, for various birthdays and things coming up. 
then I needed to go around the other side and fetch that box because I couldn't reach it from this side because the sofa is in the way. So this is largely stuff that needs to be donated. Now, as I'm filming this, we're still in lockdown. So donating things to friends, family, charity shops just isn't really an option, but I'm just gonna sort it ready to go. It's largely wet bags, uh, which I used to use for cloth nappies, but are also handy for so many other things. So I'll keep one or two of them, but obviously I don't need all of them. Uh, some of these are laundry items, which need to go into a box that had already previously been sorted, which I accessed from the other side, which is laundry stuff. And then some of the like baby bibs and things that um, the girls have grown out of. So most of this stuff is just gonna need to be put neatly, ready to be donated when that's appropriate to do so, because I mean, decluttering is a bit of a problem at the moment, isn't it? Because you, you get all this stuff and it's ready and it's lovely and it's ready to go and be donated and be used and loved by somebody else. And you can't do that because you're not allowed to go and see other humans. So, you know, I, I understand that that can be a bit of a struggle. And let me know in the comments, has that been a bit of a struggle for you with decluttering? Have you done any decluttering during this whole pandemic lockdown period? Has that been something that you've been undertaking? Have you found it easy? Have you found it difficult? Or is it something you need to do? Something that is really on your list and if so what has been stopping you doing it and are you going to get it done because i hope this video is going to give you a bit of motivation to think well if i can do it and i've been putting it off for blinking ever you can do it too i was just going through all those sticker books and seeing which ones were actually usable which ones were actually uh, going to be functional and you know still have stuff for the children to do in them and which ones just needed to go in the bin or to be recycled because they were full because we don't need to keep used sticker books from a year ago do we i do keep you know a lot of my children's art and i file that i take photos of things to treasure but you can't keep every scrap of any time they ever put pen to paper the other thing i want you to note is that you don't have to feel like you've got to do everything in one day one of the reasons i put this off for so long is because i'd had this ridiculous notion in my head that I needed to do it until it was finished and actually I needed to do a section so you need to like pull out a certain area you need to do one area or one section or one block or one drawer or one cupboard or whatever until it's done but you don't have to do one whole room or one whole house in one day because of course that's overwhelming and a ridiculous expectation especially when you're a mum and you've got children and you have to do things like you know feed your children and look after them so just set yourself a goal and and do that so initially in the first video i think i organized just my desk and then a couple of boxes and now we're pretty much there guys every box in this room has been organized it's taken me days and days and days and days and days now let's take a little look i'll flip the camera around and show you what we're dealing with and then we'll get going so starting over here this is a box which i did gather together i started putting dressing up accessories in there so that's wigs hats all that kind of thing not all of this stuff is just sarah's some of it is shared but she has more storage in her room so it all ends up in here so that is something i've started collecting and i will add to under here is a basket of clothes which sort of fits her large teddy sometimes she kind of dresses up in them but really they're not things i dress her in now they're getting on a so sort of too small so i need to organize donating some clothes that don't fit her Whoop, things are falling on the floor in here we've got onesies, dressing gowns, that kind of thing. Need to find a home for those. Under here is her dressing up basket. Quite happy with that if we can keep it kind of manageable. And then up here we've got her hanging up dressing up stuff. That's fine. Uniform needs a bit of a tidy, but it's not too bad. Most of these clothes up here, I would say are too small for her. So I need to go through those. Then if we go over here, some of this is bedding. Some of this is clothes that are too small. Some of this is toys. And some of this is just mess. Need to deal with all that. Her chest of drawers. And look at the floor. I mean, good grief. Good grief. I've got so much work to do in here. Chest of drawers. Let's have a look how bad these are. My daughter, Bella, did actually organise this. This drawer was a lot worse than this a couple of days ago. So she's organised her hairbands into that. That's cool. And the socks, not too bad. Although we couldn't even open and close that a few days ago. So thank you, Bella, for sorting that. In here, a bit more of a mess. So I need to sort out her leggings and things. Just so that it's all a bit more manageable. Floor. I mean, yikes. Yikes. Look at the floor. All needs clearing. The bookshelf all needs sorting and then these boxes so that one's mostly what are these called little people the fisher price little people so that's not too bad but these boxes oh that's a peppa pig one not again not too bad these boxes over here are more like jumbled mishmash so the jumbled mishmash boxes 
need going through and sorting out. These high rack boxes, some of them aren't too bad. So that's just Paw Patrol, that's just Toy Story. So some of them, not awful, that's just Peppa Pig. And these are the boxes that we rotate. So the ones that are higher up tend to stay a bit more organized because we bring a box down, they play with it, perhaps downstairs, perhaps it gets rotated to downstairs and then it goes away. The ones that get into a right mess are these lower down boxes, the mishmash boxes. So I need to go through the mishmash boxes. I'm thinking I'm in her bed, which also needs making. My other children do make their own beds. Zara does it some days, but is not quite there with it the rest of the time. Anyway, I need to sort under here. But also I was wondering, should we flip this bed back Background, so the headboard's up there, put the table across here, and then this, which is currently just, we call it a castle corner, but it's kind of a junk corner. She could have a bit more space to play down there. Would that be better? I don't know. Either way, I need to stop chit-chatting and just get on with it because this is not gonna do itself. Wish me luck. So I am about to get on with this, but what I am gonna do is put some AirPods in. Actually, I'll just use one at a time. I'm not gonna put two in, I'm gonna put one in. I can then talk on the phone. Sometimes I make phone calls that I wouldn't otherwise get to make. I chat with my best friend, or I listen to audiobooks or music. Now, this is one way that I do keep kind of motivated with doing cleaning and decluttering and things, because quite frankly, it's really, 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 really boring. And if you've got something to keep you entertained, it's kind of cool. It's better than having music playing out loud because I can still listen with the other ear out for the children or if they've got stuff on or whatever, it's not interrupting what they've got. It means I can move from room to room because I am going to have to move from room to room to move things around and my entertainment follows me. So just a little tip, just use one at a time so you can still listen out for the children. But also, so when one goes flat, you can just switch it for the other one and you've still got a bit of audio entertainment to keep you company. Or maybe you could listen to a YouTube video like this one and then you can listen to it on your airpods and then even if you've walked away from the screen for a minute you can still hear what i'm saying just an idea i must admit i'm suffering a little bit of paralysis by analysis now i'm just kind of standing here going where do i begin the answer is to just begin so i'm just going to do something i'm going to stop trying to figure out the logical order in which to do this because there is no logical place to start in this chaos and just start and i'm going to start by taking some things out to this chaos i don't feel like i can sort in this i'm going to start by clearing no by take no okay i'm going to start by gathering up soft toys there we go that's a good place to start i found somewhere to start this is where we store soft toys in bean bag so i'm going to gather up soft toys pop those away in there make the bed so even though i'm going to possibly move the bed i'm going to make the bed so i've got a blank ish canvas to start with and then when this room is tidy ish i'm going to start taking some stuff out of here and popping it into my room to sort so i can sort back into here as a tidy or do i sort in here oh i don't know i need to stop thinking about it and just do it <laughs> I've most definitely reached the what have I done and why did I start this stage and I want to give up and the reason I do it like this and I make a big mess is because I don't have a choice now <laughs> I have made such a mess in my bedroom that I couldn't possibly actually go to sleep tonight until I've sorted this out so I have backed myself into a corner where I have to do this because otherwise I would literally pull out one box poke around in it a bit push it back in and go do another day so one of the ways I find the motivation is by creating a huge huge mess and 
it's a bit like going on a bear hunt, can't go over it, can't go under it, gotta go through it. I always regret my life choices at this point of any decluttering project, every time, without fail. But never mind, I'm going to push through. So my plan was originally, I was gonna make the bed just so that it didn't stress me out so much. And I've put some of the teddies she wants to keep on her bed there. But I now think I want to start seeing results quite quickly. So I think what I'm gonna do before I tackle the stuff in my bedroom is I'm gonna get this room turned around and looking nice. So as I put stuff back into it, the room is looking nicer and nicer as we go, rather than sorting stuff back into a mess, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna turn this around, may as well give the floor a little vacuum. So it does mean I need to empty out some more stuff. I'm actually gonna take that stuff back off the bed that I just put there. But again, this decluttering thing isn't necessarily a linear process. Sometimes you kind of think, oh, that's not gonna work like that, and you swap it around. You've gotta be kind of quite fluid with your choices. So yeah, that's where I'm at now. Get this room turned and looking nice, and then we can slowly put the stuff back into it so it looks lovely. So I feel like I'm winning in here. I'm liking the layout. Granted, I haven't put much stuff in it. Do you know why? Do you know where all the stuff is? All the stuff is in here. So I am fully aware that I've got a long way to go, but I feel like by doing it this way round, I'm putting it back together. I'm seeing it come together. So although this makes me want to throw up in my mouth a little bit right now, I can see results happening and that is keeping me motivated. It's gonna be a long old job, I think, but I think my next job is to start putting some of this stuff back into the room just so I can make enough space to go through things. And then I could, because the floor is nice and clear in there, take one box into Zara's room at a time and sort it on the floor in there because I can see the wood for the trees. I feel like I couldn't sort in this very efficiently because I can't move and it just like ugh. I need to have a little bit of clarity so I'm gonna empty out and put away what I can back into there and then move on to the next steps of some property cluttering. Hello, how'd you do? I'm not broken, I'm just split in two. Hope you're fine, ain't got time to do everything you said you would. Frames of the past and the memory of you just come running by Pictures of sunny days With your smile and the bar How could they 
say I was broken How could they say you made me come undone Now I know that it's okay Unlike my friends, you are nothing like them oh. How could they say I was broken How could they say you made me come undone Now I know that it's okay Unlike my friends, you are nothing like them To be cool, even wear that shirt you wanted to. My friends think I'm lame. Since I met you, I am not the same. It was not meant to be a fairy tale. I'm getting somewhere, and I'm not. So I've got some boxes in here that are sorted and organised. They were already reasonably sorted and organised. Things that are important to Zara, I want to make more accessible, and things that are not, I need to kind of put on a rotational basis. So, dressing up stuff was mostly taking over our lives. So I'm just making more space for it. All of these tutus were in her dressing up under there and it was making it explode everywhere. So I've got a separate box for tutus and also a separate box for dressing up accessories, hair, hats, wigs, that kind of thing, because she loves dressing up. So if there's space for it to go away, it can stay in her room. Then down here, We've got a bigger castle corner that they've actually got space to play in. We've got all the little people, but also I've tipped all the figures, which were in their own box, and not filling a box, in there. So all of those figures and things can be played with in these castles. Then other things that are important to Zara are dollies, but also dolly clothes and things. So she really loves changing her dollies and that giant teddy bear into different clothes. So now she's got access to those. It was all crammed in one box. It didn't really fit, so it ended up all over the floor. Then I'm gonna put a box of kind of, I think we've always gotta have one, I don't know where to put this, so I'm gonna put it in that box, kind of box, and I just need to keep editing that down and decluttering it as we go. But I'm gonna have a, an anything goes kind of box over there. Now, the problem is, I've now got to really go through decluttering and editing all this stuff. <laughs> the day and although I will admit there's more I could do I think I have got it to a level where I'm really quite pleased with it. Declustering is an ongoing process and I'm gonna need to keep doing it but what I've done I think it's a million times better than it was so I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you. This is Sarah's room as it now is. I feel like it's a lot more spacious I do still have three baskets of clothing on my bed, which I need to sort for donation. But other than that, I think I'm doing pretty well. I've organized the toys and slimmed down the soft toys that are in that bean bag. It's literally just an empty bean bag. So you can buy a bean bag without beans or empty the beans. It makes a perfect soft toy container seat. Over here, I've not actually tackled in these drawers. That is gonna have to be a job for another day because I can't do it all at once. I just have to accept that. I finally got round to adding a command hook for her mirror that kept falling over. So now that will stay in place. I do need to get a big hook for her headphones to go there. Now that's just the same type of hook. It's another command hook, a st sticky hook that I've got in the other's rooms and also the same type of hook that I use to hang up their mini mouse ears. Inside this wardrobe, so we've now got bedding at the top, and then that one is a few of the dresses Zara's grown out of, but I can't quite bring myself to get rid of, that we will dress Teddy into. So it's a 
fraction full, that box, it's probably only full to about there. It's just a few bits and pieces that I shall sort again. Some of the teddies that were in the bean bag that I can't quite bring myself to get rid of yet are in there, but at least it's not exploding. This one is blankets, so that's more like snuggly blankets and things, whereas the top one is more like duvet covers and things. In here, this is literally empty, it's just a box of empty boxes, which is good. We like a bit of empty. Room to grow is fine for Christmases and birthdays. These are Peppa Pig soft toys. Now I haven't actually been through the high up boxes that she can't reach because I know they are reasonably sorted because I do those on toy rotation. So I know that each one of those boxes is just a box of whatever reasonably organized toys. And when they're up high like that, they stay that way because they only go away reasonably organized. So I've not touched that. I'll probably look at it again, but I really didn't need doing today. And the Peppa Pig toys are just gonna now go into toy toy rotation but some of these high up boxes because we've got the space to do it can be involved in toy rotation. In here onesies and dressing gowns and then in here these are some of the clothes that she's been wearing. She's had on for five minutes and hasn't bothered to hang back up but you know what sometimes you need a box that's a chair. I have a box that's a chair. You know what the chair is don't you? You're aware of the chair, the chair where things are not quite clean enough to be hung up and not quite dirty enough to go in the wash. Well Zara dresses into all these different things. These are mostly almost too small for her but she she loves changing into them. They're not quite dressing up clothes, they're more like, I don't know, clothes I don't really dress her in but she likes changing into. That's Sarah's chair of just dump her clothes because I'm not quite sure what else to do with them. In here we've got dressing up accessories, so hair things, hats, wigs, scarves, gloves, but of like a fancy dress variety as opposed to an actual wearing for warmth variety. And then in here, a lot of PJs. Could probably do with going through that to see what fits and what doesn't, but tis a job for another day. I am but one person, I can only tackle so much. Down here we've got skirts and tutus. It does seem like a lot. It was actually all these were wedged into one box, but I know that she was going to struggle to close that one box, and I thought if it's split into two boxes, she's more likely to be able to put them away herself, and then it's more likely to actually happen. Over here. So we've just got one basket of dressing up stuff, some hung up dressing up, and I really haven't tackled that yet. I need to, but again, it's going to have to be a job for another day because I'm losing the will to live. So I've put her table and chairs there. I do feel it's a bit better. She's actually got the table next to her bed to put her drink or whatever on. Now this is sort of blocking the radiator a little bit, it's slightly off the radiator, it's the summer at the moment so we don't really need the radiator, but I do feel that having the bed this way around gives her much more playing space. So this castle corner now becomes an actual play space. The real difference is the way I've organised down here, so that's my mishmash box, we've got to have a mishmash box still because there's always random stuff, so it's now got to go in there. In here I've mixed all, these are called little people which kind of go with these castles, but I've thrown in just all the other figures like all the Disney figures just anyone that you know can play in castles they can all play together it's quite inclusive Ooh, that is a dolly shoe that belongs over here so we've got a box of just dollies but I've moved all the dolly accessories into here so these are dolly clothes dolly hairbands dolly potties as you can see most of Zara's dollies are naked the clothes are now in here so all of this was crammed into one box and spread all over the room. So I've now gathered all the dollies together because they were all sprayed everywhere. I've gathered all the dolly clothes together which were just all over the floor. Yes, they're now taking up two boxes but these are the things that, are, that she plays with mostly, therefore they are most accessible. So I think this will be a lot better. Shall we show her and see what she thinks? Come and have a look at your room, Zaz. Zara! Zara, come and see your room. What do you think, Zaza? Nice. It's nice. Yeah, it looks wonderful. Right, let me explain to you all where everything goes. So, <sighs> this one is dolly clothes, dolly potties, uh -huh. dolly accessories, all the dolly things that are not physically dollies. Oh. That's a hairband, isn't it? Nice. Well, I think it used to be Bella's or yours when you were a baby. Some of the dolly clothes are in fact just old baby clothes. That is more than the dollies. I see these are dollies. That's actual dollies, yes, the big dollies, not Barbie <laughs> dollies, because your Barbie dollies are currently downstairs. You need to let me know if you want to bring those up instead. Now, over here are figures and uh, little people, all mixed in, because they can all play in these castles. And then the one in the corner is all the stuff you don't know what to do with, okay? So if you don't know what to do with it, put it in the corner. Do not leave it on the floor. But this is your little castle corner. Do you like it? Bells, are you going to play in here more now, Zara? Yeah. Yeah, and what do we think of the, the bed over here? What do we think? Zara, come and see your bed. What do you think of the bed over here? It's beautiful, is it? Oh, I'm so glad. Will you sleep on? It's like a princess bed. I mean, it is a princess bed, isn't it? <laughs> so you're going to be a good girl and sleep all night there? Yeah. More, more to the point, are you going to keep your room yes. nice and... Yes. Nice and what? But if I 
Nice and tidy. Oh, yes, please. If I make a mess, then I'll just tidy it. What a good idea. One more thing I just want to show you. Sorry, you will like this. In here, we've got tutus. More tutus. <laughs> Dressing up accessories. More tutus. More tutus. Dressing up accessories. <laughs> Crowns, hats, gloves, all the things you want to put on. And there your pyjamas, okay? This is my crown. That is your crown. And this is the dressing up. And that's the other dressing ups, yeah. So the first project we're going to tackle in this video are inside these cupboards. Now, on the outside, it looks pretty good, but there are some shoes here on the floor. Do you know why there are some shoes on the floor? This is because this little shoe, we can't find a partner for it. Why can't we find a partner for it? Because these drawers are so wedged and disgusting. Like, we can barely even close them, let alone find the things we actually need. So Zara's little lonely only sandal is missing its partner. Now, at the time of filming, it is July, and yet we still have winter boots in this drawer. This is wholly unnecessary. The children have got multiple pairs of wellies because they've got their home wellies. They've brought home their school wellies. It's, it needs doing. So I'm gonna pull all this out. I have literally only got 10 minutes. So I'm gonna do as much as I can of this in 10 minutes and then move on with my day. cleared out I'm now going to tackle this disgusting heap of shoes and sort out what needs to actually go back in the drawers because we're using it and it's summer and what can just be stored somewhere else out of the way and pulled back out when the weather gets cooler. array of wellies that I need to get the children to try on, see what fits and what doesn't fit, take it from there. This is mostly flip-flops, I've got lots of different colours of flip-flops. Probably they don't all need to live downstairs, I can probably put some of those in a box in my wardrobe and rotate them downstairs. This is a whole box of Disney Primark trainers because by the end of each trip that we've been on they've all sort of been formed to bits and they've worn them to school and for gym and things but really they don't need this many pairs of half-worn nearly ready for the bin trainers. So some of those can perhaps be recycled or donated or whatever. Need to go through, find the neatest pair of those, keep the neatest pairs and get rid of the rest. My husband's got rather a lot of pairs of shoes. I'm gonna ask him which of those he desperately needs. Um, and all these are like properly wintery boots. So they can definitely be stored somewhere other than front and center. These are kind of like party shoes that the girls wear. They wear them so rarely because they're not like super comfy shoes. They can go almost in there like with their dressing up stuff in their rooms. They do not need to be in our main storage. So I'm now gonna see if I can fit as much of this as possible. Oh, this basket. This is shoes that the children are wearing now and sandals. So let's get this as much of it as possible, put into here and see what we've got left.
we've now got two little shoes that have no partners. So we've got to find the other half of those, otherwise they're not good. We've got a basket of things I need the children to try on to see if they still fit. This is a basket of shoes that are going upstairs to be stored that may still be used. Like I'll probably wear these flip flops, but not every day. So they can kind of go out the way and I'll put them away upstairs. And then this is a basket of shoes for storage because there is no way we're gonna be wearing those anytime soon. At least we hope. And now let's have a look at the results after our 10 minute tidy. We're looking a lot better. So I filled these little boxes by putting the shoes in this way so they're all easier to access. And then hopefully we can continue to put things away neatly and it won't get so messy so quickly. I mean, in reality, I'm just gonna have to repeat this process again. We've even got some space to put extra shoes, which is good because it's good when things are not rammed to capacity because that way it keep, makes it harder because that's when it gets harder to keep things neat. I could probably put some more of these flip flops upstairs as well, but for now, I think that'll do. So that's 10 minute tidy number one. For our next 10 minute tidy organization project, we're going to tackle the girls' boxes of doom. Now we've got these Calyx units in the lounge, which were just all along this wall under the TV. I've temporarily kind of plonked them here since rearranging the room. Um, but that's beside the point. The purpose of these boxes was at Christmas, they had a box each to put their bits and pieces in that Father Christmas bought them. And then throughout the year, they've just got somewhere to put things downstairs. And the idea is that we periodically sort them out and tidy them up. But unfortunately, girlies, girlies, <laughs> what are they looking like? Oh, just junk. literally junk. So upstairs, the higher boxes are generally like a box of Duplo, a box of dolls, a box of this, a box of that. This is just now, yeah, box of junk. So we're gonna tip it all out. Tip it? We're gonna tip it all tip out. It. We are going to utilize these baskets to sort things into from a category point of view. Hmm. What needs to go upstairs, what needs to be recycled, and what can actually go back into the boxes of no longer doom. So girls, I think we're making some progress. We found all of these dollies, which belong in the dolly box, which was slid behind. This current unit, I'm not quite sure what to do with it. It's currently two boxes deep. For now, it'll do. So pop all the dollies and the dolly accessories into there. They're kind of Barbie sized, aren't they? Yeah. Now over here, we've got a box of just kind of things to make and do, coloring books, jewelry to make, that kind of thing. So I think rather than the girls having a box each, which they don't really need at the moment, to dump stuff in, we'll have a box of crafty things and a box of, of other things, shall not we girls? Yeah. And then we can actually accommodate all this stuff. So that stuff's recycling. That basket's going up to Zara's room. That box is going up to Bella's room, that basket at least. Oh. What's this, Gillies? Um, this... Look inside. Look inside. Oh, Encanto figures, okay. So that can stay downstairs, perhaps in like a shared oh, toy box. Maybe. Oh, is that is that what we need is, to do next? <laughs> this is um, a bag of dolls. A bag of dolls. This is mine. I see. So I'm not sure we're gonna have time to do it now, but maybe the next box to organize is the dolly box. So just close it for now um, <laughs> and we will come back to it. Otherwise, this is a lot of dolly. Yeah, otherwise this is gonna be a lot more than a 10 minute tidy, isn't it? And then we found all this Lego and all of these uh, bits to go in there. So girlies, can you pop these? 
Cool. Oh, girlies. The third yeah, girlies, can you put all these little bits of jewellery making stuff back in there and then we'll pop it all in a craft box. Another quick 10 minute tidy organization project done. So the next little 10 minute organization project I'm going to tackle is in my desk drawer. I don't think the desk is gonna be too awful to organize because if you've been around here for a while, I did a three day organizing my office mini series. And in that I set up dividers in my drawers so that it would be easy to take things out and organize and put back. However, it's going to take more than 10 minutes to organize the whole office. I reckon I can do the drawers in 10 minutes, but all of this Calyx unit behind me probably needs going over again by now, if I'm honest, which brings me back to the point that I've made a lot before. And I'm going to say it again. It's that organizing is not a one and done kind of thing. You can put systems in place that mean clutter will build up less and that things will stay tidier and it'll be easier to keep them tidier. However, you're always gonna have spots in your house where things build up and things that you're gonna have to do again because as you bring more things into the house or as your children get older, they go through different phases, you go through different phases of life, there are gonna be things that need to be moved on out of your house and to be reorganized in your house. Anyway, enough faffing and chatting. Let's clear the desk and then empty out the drawers, give it a good clean and then organize. So that's everything out of these drawers. That's a lot of stuff. Now, hopefully this should be quite easy to sort because they're in these little containers. But actually looking at this now, even though this was supposed to be a little 10 minute tidy, it's feeling quite overwhelming. Now, inside these drawers, you might wonder why there's so much hair. It's because I keep a hairbrush in my desk drawer. I think all these little scabby bits of hair have fallen into the drawer so I'm going to give these drawers a little bit of a clean out and then start sorting all of this back into there hopefully in a bit of order.
I'm making a little bit of progress, but this is possibly going to take a bit longer than 10 minutes. Sometimes these jobs uh, do take a bit longer than I might have hoped. So I've, I've emptied out all of these little containers. I really should organise these one at a time a bit more frequently, but as it happens, I'm just doing this as a nice big job. There is a lot of stuff in here I need to sort the things that actually belong in my desk back into these and the things that should be somewhere else to somewhere else. Let's do it. Okay, so it's taken a bit more than 10 minutes for this one, but my desk is now looking pretty good. I've even got a space, because it's good to have space. It's good to have not every single centimeter accounted for. So I've got my glasses that I use at the computer, then I take those out if I'm driving as well. Far too many lip balms really, but hey ho. Pens, tape measure. I do need to buy some more tape because the tape I had doesn't fit on there. Um, various packets of wires and things, although most of the wires are in the other drawer some hairbrushes type stuff, uh, moisturiser, because I do like to put that on my face sometimes it's terribly dry, scissors, uh, stapler, that kind of thing. <laughs> in case you're wondering what these are, these were some of these cards that they were going out in the supermarkets last year. I stashed them um, to give to my children just when they've been good or whatever, like a little treat. And then in this drawer, this is my more techie drawer for my more youtube -y stuff. So I've got a lot of hard drives because, you know, backing up. I've now got all the wires, or most of the wires anyway, in one place. These little um, wire tie, cable tie things are so handy. Um, I will link those below as well as these plastic things because I know I'll be asked about those. Camera lenses and things for my big camera. Uh, lights, battery packs, GoPro and things for my traveling. The children's um, air tag things. So these I put on the children when we are traveling or uh, when we're out and about and then I know where they are which obviously I'm keeping an eye on them but just if the worst should happen and they were to go missing um, so that is a an ND filter it's like sunglasses for my camera just lots of funny tacky little bits in there a lot of camera batteries for all the different cameras SD cards things like that so that's now much easier to find all the stuff I need to actually work. Now do I have a basket of bits I have to go through? I mean I absolutely do but I know this stuff does not belong in my desk so I can now take that, go through that and put stuff either in the bin, in the recycling or where it actually goes which is not 
in my desk. It's now time to tackle my dressing table. This is a job I have been procrastinating for ages and it's already divided up using little dividers. I could easily have sorted this bit by bit, but I have not done it. So I'm going to tackle it right now. I'm hoping it should only take me 10 minutes. Who knows, let's start. I've pulled everything out of the drawer and given it a little vacuum because it was a bit gross. I'm now going to take these boxes apart one by one, clean them inside if necessary and put them back when they are tidy and sorted. And then I think all this is going to need a little bit of a dust. Let's go. progress update. So we've still got quite a lot of just junk on the floor. We'll, we'll get to that. In here so far, I'm trying to sort things into parts of the face. It also turns out I had multiples of lots of things and I didn't realize because they're all in different places. So I'm trying to kind of go like face type stuff as in concealers and things. I'm not even sure I've got that. It's actually a bit dark for me. It's if I ever get a tan. I don't have a tan, um, so maybe that needs to go and some various others. I need to perhaps go back through these, be a bit more ruthless if anything's dried out or is any good. I'm working through wiping all this stuff and putting things back in neatly. So these are little um, concealers and um, these are little like cheek and lip type things. And then we've got like highlighter, bronzer, powder, things like that eye stuff um, I've got more like magnetic lashes type things that I realized I had so it's all those these are mascaras and eyeliners and then we've got lip sticks and um, what are these called uh, lip balms and then lip and cheek tint and lip liners so I'm just trying to categorize things so that I can actually find what I'm looking for quite easily I've also found all of these that have actually run out I think I was saving them because if you take a certain amount of products back to MAC then they give you something a lipstick or something or at least they used to but the problem is I don't actually have a store like super locally to me so 
I guess I have to remember when I'm going on a trip somewhere else that there may be a Mac store to take those with me because then they recycle them and I think they give you a lipstick. Let me know in the comments if that's still a thing. Right, need to keep plodding, keep with the sorting and perhaps be a bit more ruthless with anything that's dried up and is a bit scabby because that's the stuff that causes clutter. So now we've got reasonably organized stuff. Starting over here, I've got, this is my little tripod for when I do like lives and things. And then we've got lips, eyes, face, base, and then just bits I use generally, some Apple Watch straps and jewelry under there. And this is the little mirror that I pull out for like close up, oh hello, for <laughs> like doing close up makeup and things. And then some more, uh, Foundations and things that I use, not for day-to-day -day makeup, I've put further back and then the stuff I use more, I've put at the front. I've got to say, I'm reluctant to get rid of all this makeup because I do occasionally do like full going out makeup. But if I'm honest, all I use most days is that, one of those, and maybe uh, that, one of those, and maybe a lip balm. That's probably it. Most days, I've got all this, <laughs> which I use sometimes. I do full face makeup sometimes, but generally, it's just that. So we'll pop these bits away. We need to, um, ew, give this top a little clean. And then that's my dressing table organized. For our next 10 minute organization project, we're going to tackle the understairs cupboard. Now this understairs cupboard is supposed to have a nice hanging rail with beautifully hung up coats and organized hooks. And what ends up happening is things get slung in there, maybe with people's eyes closed, and it just needs all pulling out and giving a little clean out, because goodness knows what's at the bottom, and then putting back neatly and pulling out anything we're not using and just generally sorting. So we've got 10 minutes, let's go.
empty out the cupboard, I've given it a little wipe out. I'm now gonna sort everything back into it and hopefully filter out some stuff that really doesn't belong in there so it can be a bit less squished. So if we look in this wardrobe now, we can see all these are hung up reasonably neatly. I don't expect this to last for long, but it's a good start. It's slimmed down a lot and you will notice there is nothing at all currently hang on the hooks. So what you'll probably find is my family won't reach for the hangers. They'll put things on the hooks, but at least there are hooks, including one small enough for Zara to reach and then the others can reach the higher hooks but there is no space. There's also a little bit of space down the bottom and that's all been cleaned. Part of the reason there is no space is because all of this has been pulled out. Uh, all of this is kind of, it's just hoodies, so these would belong in the girls' bedroom, not in the coats cupboard. Those are like lighter denim jackets. It's winter now, we won't need those. Those belong in my husband's wardrobe. And all of these are hoodies that have been slung in that kind of need washing. They're looking a bit grubby, so they can go into the wash. So now I'm just gonna move all this stuff vacuum up and then that's our 10 minute tidy done. Another day, another 10 minute organization project. And for today's little project, I'm going to tackle this box. It's supposed to be a box of easy to grab backstock, as they call it in the home edit, toiletries. So the backups, as I like to call them. I like to buy one to use, one currently in use, like in the bathroom or whatever, and one as a backup. But it's kind of descended into just a dumping ground for things. So there are multiples of some things, everything's just a bit squished and all over the place. So I'm gonna pull it all out, see what we've got, actually see if there's anything I need to buy as backups. Um, and see what I've got also for like upcoming trips, things that need to go into toiletries or whatever. But long story short, it's a bit of a mess and I can barely shut the box at the moment. So let's get it sorted. I've only got 10 minutes. So this looks a bit like chaos, but we're moving towards organized chaos. The reason having a system for storing things is in purpose is this pile of deodorants. Now, these are not a waste because I will go through them, but it looks like I won't have to buy any more for about a year because I keep thinking I haven't got any deodorant because I can't see any. And I've got a trillion. 
So, we're very lucky these don't go off. But if we don't have a proper system, if we allow what was happening in this box to happen, the whole system falls apart and we buy too much of what we don't need. So luckily, like I said, this isn't going to go to waste. It's not the end of the world, but it will mean I won't have to buy these for a while. And I now know that. So I've got deodorant together. I've got two backups of dry shampoo. I do go through that a lot, so I will go through those quite quickly. I've got a lot more bath bombs for the girls than I realised. I've now got those in one place, so I need to find a better way of putting those all together. I found all these packs of tissues, which are actually not much good up here. They need to go downstairs with the um, hats and gloves and stuff, because they need to be kind of grabbed and added to bags by the front door, so they can be separated out. These are all sun creams, so they can be put away under the bed for next year because it's currently winter, so we're not going to need those for a bit. All these little sachets were just kind of loose in the box, which is ridiculous, of cow pollen things, so they can be grabbed to top up like travel bags and things. I've gathered together all of the toothpastes so that uh, when it's time to replace toothpaste, unfortunately, our family does use three different types of toothpaste, so the girls use a different type each. They're the only ones they'll like. Um, all of my children are quite fussy with toothpaste. I guess it's a sensory thing um, when they were quite small. Uh, William, myself, my husband, uh, my eldest one, he's home, would use just normal toothpaste, but the girls use different ones. So three different types of toothpaste at the moment. So we've got those. Um, I've got, these are like unopened makeup bits that I bought when there was like a deal, three for two or whatever. Um, but I need to have those together and ready to open when I run out of whatever I'm currently using. This is a bag of like minis and travels and you know, travel sized, airplane usable size shampoos, conditioners, things like that. So I need to put those all together to grab when packing a travel bag. I've got some stuff I don't use much. I only use hairspray when I am curling my hair, which is not very often, to be honest, especially not in the winter when the weather goes a bit gross. Also this is for when I'm going through a phase of having curly hair. So to be honest, that is not the kind of stuff I need to grab. I don't want to check it out because I possibly will use it. But that's kind of the stuff I can hide under my ottoman bed. Because really all I want in this box is stuff for my family when they're like, mum, I've run out of so-and-so and they can just go and grab one. So a bath bomb for the girls, fresh toothpaste, a new deodorant. Turns out there are no backup deodorants for my husband. He took the last one out of the box and didn't mention it, so I haven't bought one. We'll have to buy one for him, or he's going to have to smell like my armpits. Not the end of the world, I'm sure. All of these things are antibacterial sprays and things, so again, we don't need that many of those as a grab and backup thing. These packs of antibacterial wipes are good for like wiping tables and things when you go out for the day, and perhaps the table is not as clean as you may like when you sit down to eat somewhere. Perhaps the table hasn't been cleared yet. So those are good for days out, trips and things like that. Or alternatively, um, just some spray like this and a little serviette or whatever. I've got travel size bottles. We're getting that. The, the point of the story is we're getting that. I can start packing some of this organised stuff back into the box and sifting through the rest of it. We're nearly there. to add to the box the things that prompted me to do this little exercise. The shampoo that I bought and I just had no space to put in so I can go in the box and the backup conditioner. So I'm going to fill up um, the little conditioner dispenser thing in the bathroom with one and one can go in back stock. I'm going to chuck some of the bits that we're not going to use for a while like the uh, sunscreens under the bed, tidy up this rest of the mess on the floor and then get on with my day because I've got lots to do and I've only got 10 minutes for this job.
to now actually access stuff in this box and see what we have. Like a million deodorants. Don't add deodorant to your list read, just, just deodorant for your husband. So anyway, that is now organised. I can now find the bath bombs for the girls and all scattered, find all the bits we need. And this lot is to go downstairs. So that just belongs downstairs with my spare reusable bags. I've got tissues and wipes and things that need to go in that drawer under the stairs to grab when we're on our way out of the house. So this is where we're starting. Bella's bookshelf. It's just got to be such a mess of jumble that it's not actually something she's going to and using. There is a larger bookshelf that the children refer to as their library in Zara's room, which kind of communal. But I want this to be somewhere Bella comes for things she actually wants to read. She's really getting into reading now. We could actually create an additional bookshelf because that box is empty. We could have a bit of a switch around. So let's pull it all out and see where we're at. So we've now got some books that Bella would like to keep in her room. These are books that are going to go into what we're calling Zara's library. And these are like earlier readers, which are more suitable for Zara. These are also kind of earlier readers. So all of those go into Zara's room. I'm not sure you're quite you're ready for Harry Potter yet, Belle. So do you think? Um, not quite ready? We can keep sure. it in here in case you're ready. Yeah. Uh, these Roald Dahl books, William, uh, I think, has read all of those. So we're moving those into your room in case you fancy reading them. So now I think what we need to do, give this shelf a little clean, fill up the shelf and see if we've got any space or if we need to clean another shelf. So I think what we're going to do now is move this Lego up here so we can clear a bit more space in the books. So next job is to empty out these shelves, sort out which books Zara has grown out of and we'd like to donate and which ones belong in a neat and tidy area and then bring in some of the books that are being moved in here from Bella's room. I pulled all of the books onto the floor and ew, there's a lot. Um, there's also a really neatly organised, which were under Zara's Nuimo's shelf of That's Not My Books. Now she's probably grown out of That's Not My Books now, but they look so pretty. I think Bella must have organised them in rainbow order and they've stayed neat because they were hiding behind these Nuimo's. So now we need to be a little bit ruthless, sort what's actually going to be used and what needs to be donated, wipe and restock the shelves and then we're done. But all of these books which need to be donated, things that she's just grown out of really, like In the Night Garden, so sad because I read In the Night Garden. I don't think my eldest was really into it, but certainly the little three were really into it. These are the phonics books, which are just finger phonics where you trace, I mean, they're brilliant and I can highly recommend them, where you, there's like a cutout and you trace them, but she's a little bit beyond just learning the phonics, so they can go to be donated and then just other books that she's just kind of grown out of. Meaning the books on these shelves are suitable for definitely the girls. Over here we've just got more like books that I would read to them or maybe books Bella would choose to read to herself. Also she's decorated the shelves with the Nuimos. Um, but this is a book shelf of books that Zara could read to me. So these are more like easy early reader type books where the words are focused on kind of early phonics and things so that's a quick job but time well spent i've got to say the children were so much more enthusiastic yesterday about reading and zara even said mummy i've got so many nice books now these are literally the same books they had before but because she can actually find them and access them she just spent ages looking at books and reading together and just being a lot more enthusiastic about it which is fantastic so it's weird in that getting rid of stuff, I took two baskets full of books that she'd grown out of, but she actually feels like she's got more stuff now that some of it's gone. Anyway, I'm going to start by just straightening the room up a tiny bit. So it's starting sort of tidy. And then we're going to tack all these drawers that, um, yeah, they're going to need some work. OK, 
Okay, time to tackle all this. I'm going to do my usual trick of emptying it out all over the floor. <laughs> oh, and organising it. My children are pretty good at putting things away when they are organised, but when it gets to this stage, and bless us, are still only five, so when it gets to this stage, she does find it a bit overwhelming. But I'm pretty confident that while things are kept with a system, and they're not allowed to get like this, they're pretty good at staying on top of it, and I think she'll be pleased when it's done. Okay, enough procrastinating. Let's pull it out of the floor and deal with this mess. that ew ew what a mess why did i start this stage these drawers are now cleaned out and ready to be refilled i've got a massive basket of headbands that need sorting this is pretty much all leggings so they can be folded and then i just need to go through all this which is just all random bits doesn't necessarily all fitter i've got some of these that are sort of half sorted vests and things about random boxes of goodness knows what anyway let's just plod through categorize i mean that's a random anna plat why is it in here anyway let's get on with it perfect but I've made some massive progress in Zara's chest of drawers so it's now pretty tidy at the top we've got a nicely organized hairbands with bows hairbands without bows a general bits that she wouldn't want me to sort or organize or tidy or throw away um, that I will perhaps go through with her later but perhaps it's always good to have someone to dump things Crowns, every girl needs crowns. Pants, uh, wallet, 
her sleepy mask that she likes to sleep in and then down the bottom we've got leggings not sure how long they'll stay neatly organized like this but i'll do my best to give her a hand to help her keep them like this because i think she will like it being able to actually find things and then we've got jeggings skirts socks and vests i must say i'm pretty pleased with that I don't know where today has gone. I have been at the computer working since I finished doing Zara's drawers this morning. I have finally managed to get my video done for my Disney channel about the disability system and explain how that all works. I've had so many requests for that and it's just been one of those videos that I just hadn't got around to doing because I had so many other, like, the vlogs and things to finish. But I think the other thing I can be a little bit guilty of, and this was a little bit the case with the planner as well that I've been putting together, which is available to buy now, by the way, if um, those of you have been asking, when's the planner, when's the planner ready, um, you can get it using the link below. I think I spend so much time about worrying about getting things right. It can be quite easy to just be like, putting things off that are a bit overwhelming because you're worried, what if I don't get it right? What if I leave something out? That's the big thing. I think this is the thing, the disability thing. I wanted to make it such a comprehensive video that I was like, what if I leave something out? And it makes me procrastinate it. Whereas sometimes you just gotta do it. And I think I feel like this anyway. Sometimes I worry so much about not getting things perfect that I don't do them at all. And sometimes done is better than best, isn't it? So I've done this video and do you know what? If I've left something out of it, I'll just have to remake the video or I'll just have to add to the blog post or I'll just have to add something, pin something in the comments or whatever it might be. Or if something isn't perfect in the planner, I'll have to make a second version or send out amendments or whatever. And I think it's so easy to let perfectionism stop us from doing anything at all. That's the case with me anyway. But that is something that I've definitely had to kind of push against pretty much my whole adult life. Anyway, I am gonna go and get my darling children now. It is at least sunny. It's not pouring with rain here in Wales for the first time in forever, or which has gotta be a good thing. Okay, Zara, mummy has spent some time sorting out your drawers. Do you wanna have a look? Yeah. What do you think? I love it. You love it? Why do you love it? Because it's all sorted. Yeah, well it didn't look like that this morning, did it? No. Do you think we could keep it nice and tidy? We've got headbands with bows, glittery headbands, crowns, pants. Do you want to look in the bottom drawer? <laughs> do you think you can actually find things now? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's okay. Should we have a look at some of these toys to see which ones you might want to keep and which ones you want to, might want to make space for in case you have some things for your birthday? Yeah. Oh, I did swap some things around here. I found these, look. And do you know who else They're I found? They're some of my favourite toys. They are some of your favourites you've forgotten about. I know, I they were they were in a high up box. I know. And look, look who else I found. <laughs> Jasmine is Zara's new favourite princess. It used to be Cinderella, she swapped to Jasmine now. I also found this box, look, you've lost Mary. Mary? Yes, I know. Wow. And this is Belle. So anyway, this isn't, I was just showing you this quickly. This isn't what we were gonna do. <laughs> I wanted to, oh, you wanna get those out, do you? You wanna get Belle out? Okay, right, Never mind. I've, I've, I shouldn't have done that, Never mind. What I wanted to know was, shall we donate these, these um, Postman. Postman Pat toys to yeah. school? because school have asked for donations of toys because they're setting up a toy shop, aren't they? Like, yeah. to, so you can earn money and transactions and things. So would these Postman Pat toys be good for school? What do you think? I've lost you now, haven't I, because you're too excited with all the things you just found. Yep. <laughs> I had another thought. You know, I don't like you pulling down these boxes above your head. I get you to ask Mummy to pull those down, don't I? Because I don't want them to be pulling things on your head. But can you reach books from this shelf? What do you think? Shall we move the books up one? Because that way you've got two rows of boxes you can actually access yourself. And then the books on there. We could do the same for you, Bella. Wait, all of them, all of them. So we could move all of the books one row up. What do you think about that idea? Bella, what are your thoughts there? I'm not sure. If we move all the books from down there to up there. Is that the same level you've got yours on anyway? Yeah, I've got level three. Right, but Zara, have a look in Bella's. I'm talking about putting it in the same as Bella's. You, you're too busy with all those toys, now you find Marie. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> she's thrilled. Thrilled. This is the benefit of toy rotation. Zara thinks she's got new toys now. <laughs> so it'd be the I same height as this box. shelf, Zara. So you'd have two rows of boxes you could reach by yourself. And then, shall we do that? What do you yeah. think? Yeah. So come on then. Mummy, go and move and that all means the I books can have up two one. Toy boxes. It does. Mm -hmm.
There you go, Zara. That's much better, don't you think? Yeah. I feel that's much more grown up. When we designed this room, you were much shorter when we moved here. Yeah. Okay, so the place is looking like a tent now because you find all these teddies. But that's fine because you're going to have boxes you can actually reach to put them away. Or they're not going away, they're they all going to live on your bed, every single one. Yeah, because I love them. Right. Is there going to be any space for you? Um, I will go here. Right, okay, in that tiny space there. Fine, very good. Bella's done an excellent, excellent job of organising. You're very good at organising, aren't you, Bells? So now this Postman Pat stuff, wee, wee. we're happy for that to go to school? Yeah. Okay, we'll swap that out of that box into another one to take to school. And the big red boat? Yeah. That is a baby toy, really, isn't it, do you think? Yeah. Baby toy? What about Paw Patrol? You, have, you literally haven't looked at Paw Patrol since we moved here. Zara, Paw Patrol take that to school? Yeah. Yeah? Belle's happy with that? Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. Then you'll have actually more space for the things you want to need, and then it'll be easier to find the things you want to play with. Yeah! Yeah! Now it's time to empty the dishwasher and then make dinner. Tonight for our HelloFresh meal, we have got quick beef and bean chili. This one only takes 20 minutes to prepare, which is great because we've spent quite a lot of time upstairs organizing since we got back from school. quite yummy and Miss Bella here who normally says she doesn't like chilli don't like chilli mummy don't like chilli ask for seconds <laughs> mummy I don't like chilli I don't want chilli you liked it didn't you <laughs> <laughs> so that was definitely a hit um, and she's also smiling because the yeah, Amazon man's just been and brought these which I got on a bit of a bargain you started reading one on the iPad don't you you can download on uh, Apple books the first chapter of lots of books and you read the first chapter of, of the sleepovers the sleepovers I think she's moving into like the Jacqueline Wilson kind of range of books that kind of age range and you really enjoyed it didn't you but she does prefer reading actual books to books on a tablet sometimes i do sometimes yeah I, like... and obviously if you need to take it into school yeah then it is um you've got to physically be able to take it so it's this one this is the one you're going to read isn't it with um uh friends in the alphabet club amy bella chloe emily and daisy so that'd be cool and then when you've read them all then zara will get to the age where she needs to read them won't she yeah so and, you, and at least you've got a little bit of space on your bookshelf for these new phase of books that you're moving into. So let me know what are your children of Bella's ish age into reading at the moment. It's always good to have new ideas of what to encourage them to read. William's currently reading all of the Harry Potter books so he's sort of halfway through that series. I'm really enjoying those but open to suggestions for him too. I'm gonna tell you a little secret. Nothing is as perfect as it appears on social media, especially people's perfectly clean and tidy homes. Because generally people will only show you the perfectly clean and tidy bits. People often say to me, Ree, how do you keep your home so clean and tidy? And while generally most of it on the surface looks reasonably clean and tidy because I do put things in place to keep surfaces clear and things like that, the truth of the matter is I've got little pockets of doom in my home, little Monica cupboards. Who remembers Friends, that episode where Monica's whole place was really tidy and then she had one cupboard where she shoved everything? Well the truth is no matter how organised you get and how clean and tidy things can be, when you've got kids especially, clutter accumulates. If you are new around here by the way, hi I'm Ree from mummyof4.com. Yes I have four children, my eldest is in uni, three children living at home and I just have got to tell you that Staying organised is not a one and done thing, not for me at least. It's one of those things that has to be done kind of on a cycle and we're in September at the moment. I know we're moving into the season of three of my children's birthdays within six weeks of Christmas. Christmas, a lot of stuff coming into the home, a lot of things being purchased and in order to do that I'm going to have to create some space. So I've got a bit of a cupboard of doom which I've been procrastinating dealing with 
in what is the playroom. Most of the time it was my eldest's bedroom when he's here full time and when he gets back it's his bedroom again. Basically that cupboard of doom has had a lot of stuff shoved in it. So today, <laughs> probably gonna regret this later, keep watching for the bit in the video where I'm totally regretting my life choices, but I'm going to do the only thing that I know to do in order to make myself do it, which is pull it all out, sort it all. I guarantee you there are things in there that I do not need in my life. And I, the goal is to free up some space so that when I go to sort some other things, like this whole unit behind me, this needs sorting, I've got some space in my life to move things into move things around. So without further ado, let's go and show you what I'm talking about. So this is the children's playroom. <laughs> and look, this stuff has been spilling out. This is some stuff that was decluttered from Zara's room quite some time ago, and yet has it left the house yet? No, it was shoved in the cupboard of doom. A case that needs to go away since our trip. Is there any space for it? No, because the cupboard of doom is full. I'm really nervous to open this up now. I can't believe I'm going to do this on the internet and show people. Uh, look. Um, yeah. Oh no. Oh no. That's just such a state. Look, in here we've got all of that is calyx. So that is what a 2x4 calyx full of goodness knows what. We've got four calyx boxes there, six calyx boxes there. I can't even access them, there's so much junk in the way. And then over here, oh no. But look, do you know what? It's all gotta come out. It's all gotta come out. I'm gonna empty it all out. And only then can we actually do what needs to be done and just really, really sort it. Oh my goodness, what am I doing? We collide, we break down. Caving in to our doubts Faces filled with sadness When words are said, we'll regret I knew I said I'd get to the regretting my life choices for tackling this project bit. Who knew it would be so soon? So, cases are out. Excellent. Done to pull out this. This is an air conditioning unit that was buried so deep that during the current heat wave we forgot about it, for goodness sake. All these boxes still need to be pulled out. I have taken down all the hanging stuff, moved the chair sideways so I can get into here, which I don't need to do regularly, but I think next step, empty out these boxes and clean. Clean it, clean it, and then we'll start dealing with the horrific mess I've made. So on the plus side, the cupboard behind me is empty and ready to clean. On the downside, I can't see the floor in my living room, there's nowhere to sit, and I cannot physically go to bed tonight until this is done because the whole house is now upside down. I have definitely got myself into a hole that there's only one way out of it, and that is by sorting the mess. So I'm now going to give this wardrobe a clean and then start putting things back into it. I don't mind there being stuff in it, I just want it to be stuff that we actually use, not just stuff that's been shoved there that doesn't actually belong in the house and we haven't looked at, for, or even looked for for that matter, for years. So let's now clean before we begin the horrific task of sorting. I know I always normally start 
start up high, I dust up high before a vacuum. Why are you doing it this way round, Drew? It's because the floor was so gross, I did not want to step on it in my bare feet. So now I'm gonna spray and wipe and dust, work down, and then I guess I'll have to do the floor again before we can start putting stuff back in. Let's start again To a place a long time ago When I kissed your lips I can see the fire that we made Just to save us When we try to make up for never letting go Said the things we promised not to say That we break up Just to start all over Even though we know some quick wins some of this stuff needs to go directly back in for example this is bedding that goes with the sofa bed that when my eldest comes home pull it out chuck the bedding on the bed these are sleeping bags could i find the sleeping bags when my child had a sleepover the other day no because there was so much mess so everything that's going back in i'm going to use this label maker and i'm going to label both sides of the boxes so whichever side i'm looking at it I can see what is in the boxes and it'll just make my life a lot easier. So, quick win. Label these, put them in, that's two boxes down and only 11 billion to go. God, I just want to go my own way, gonna let the past burn down cause honestly don't want to be stuck in more in conversations with you, with you. I'm gonna leave it all behind Find myself, I'm gonna start with new Yeah I'm on my way now
your car in the backseat Wide awake is the way that you left me Oh Okay, I'm nowhere near finished, totally overwhelmed. The whole house is literally upside down. But I know I've got to stop because I've got to take my children to their activities. So I'm just gonna have to find some energy and momentum to pick this up later on. Oh, back from activities, had dinner, been plodding on a bit more. Let's keep plodding. I'm gonna create some boxes for seasonal, off-season stuff, as in hats in the summer and flip-flops in the winter. And we got Ugg boots, it's summer, we don't need those at the moment. So I'm gonna call these boxes off season seasonal to go underneath my seasonal boxes. <sighs> Definitely regretting having started this. I just know it's gonna be really great when it's done. So I'm gonna keep going. And I keep fitting into the background. I'm wide awake, now you keep missing out for sure. children are now in bed my husband is out so I can just crack on and tackle all this but I've got to say I don't have much more energy I've got to tackle it equally I cannot go to bed until it doesn't look like this anymore because I have to get up in the morning and exercise and work and do all the things which I can't do with all this mess around me so I think I'm just gonna have to put as much stuff as I can away in boxes pick through the stuff in the lounge that needs to be hung up and then whatever's left that needs sorting to go because I know there's some stuff my husband I need to know if he wants to sell it or donate it or whatever I'm just gonna have to put it in an orderly pile so that I can deal with it and <laughs> it's not taking over the whole house because at the moment oh it's looking pretty shocking I'm not quite sure I'm gonna finish it <laughs> much much later the house is looking far from perfect but I think it's at a level where I might be able to go to bed so before I do that I'm going to show you what I've done so all of this is to go in the car that's for donating to the school those are shopping bags I found I also dropped off five bin bags for donation earlier and I've got another three already in the car to drop off tomorrow I need to sort out all this wrapping paper. The wrapping paper situation is wild, but I've got something on order for that. So make sure you subscribe with bell notifications on because I've ordered a thing, which hopefully will sort uh, this situation. Now I've slimmed down the coats and things a lot, but there are still quite a few. And you can just move them now because there are fewer to one side to access the boxes, which are now at least labeled from both sides. I looked everywhere for the floating sleeping bags before. I should be able to find them now. Again, coats down here, but I can move them one side or another side to access all the stuff because it's not overstuffed. Everything is labelled. It makes me happy. Down the bottom, I have got helium, um, and I have put the air conditioning unit back in there. Not sure if that's going to stay or go, but for now, for tonight, it's fine. And then over here, this is the extra mattress, which doubles up with a sofa bed. I don't really know what to do with that so for now it's shoved in there but at least we can move around in here. This was all falling out on me 
every time I opened the door before it was a nightmare. So down here we've got boxes full of labelled stuff and this side is my entire Calyx, yes, eight boxes all labelled seasonal. They are all currently empty, yes, empty. What are you going to put in the seasonal boxes, Ray? Well, I'm going to put things for upcoming seasons, so Easter eggs I've bought for friends and family before Easter, Halloween decorations just before Halloween, gifts that haven't been wrapped yet, all the things, and I have got eight boxes and I'm adamant they are staying empty other than seasonal specific things. I have put the suitcases up here and the other suitcases just in the corner over there. So it's not perfect, but oh my goodness, it's so much more organized than before. And yes, I, I do have to still sort the wrapping paper, but we'll, like I said, that'll be next vlog kind of job. These boxes in the living room are full of things that I'm not quite sure what to do with, whether my husband wants to sell them or whether we're donating them. So I will talk to him about those tomorrow. Can't deal with that now ditto with this pile and yes there is still a rather large pile that needs sorting but you know what it's better a pile than an entire room because earlier if you remember it was flipping horrific in here so remember no matter how perfect everything looks on social media people are hiding some of the messy bits and not necessarily in a malicious way sometimes it's because they want you to think them in a certain way or they're ashamed of the mess I get that, I get that. Um, sometimes it's personal life stuff that maybe everyone looks all smiley like their life is perfect, but actually they've got some stuff going on behind the scenes that it's not that they don't want to share it, it's just not appropriate to because maybe it involves other people. I think this is really important for all of us to remember, I'm talking to myself as much as to you, that we shouldn't be hanging, that we should not be falling into the comparison trap and beating ourselves up about everyone else's home being perfect. So please, if you have got messy cupboards of doom, in your home make me feel better by letting me know down in the comments that would be brilliant so i'm gonna have to pick up the rest of this tidying in an upcoming vlog because i'm absolutely drained exhausted now and as much as it pains me to leave all this and go to bed it's what i'm gonna have to do so thanks so much for watching don't forget to like subscribe do all those youtubey things you can click on screen and check out my patreon if you want to hang out with me a little bit extra see some early release videos that kind of thing or click on another video that youtube thinks you may like on screen now thanks very much guys I'm going to bed.